Good evening, everyone. I'd like to declare the meeting open at one minute past six and start by acknowledging that tonight we meet on the lands of the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation and pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I can see we have all council members in attendance this evening, so no apologies. So I'll go straight to public question time and receiving of public statements. Um, welcome, members of the public gallery. Um, it's your opportunity to speak during public question time. We do just ask that if you decide to speak that you state your name, the suburb in which you live, the item in which you're speaking to, and we do ask that you speak for up to three minutes and our CEO does have the timer running. Um, there's no order, just whoever would like to come forward first. Stream and hear what you have to say, but actually to go back and see it on the archived um, record. Uh, would it inhibit what you say? Would it you know, be a good thing? We're interested in your views. And also I have just um, would like to mention that two-way William Street is well and truly underway. Um, we've done the preliminary works and from the 1st of December um, we will be making that two-way. So there'll be, I imagine, huge amounts of signage, flashing signs, lots of people out there to make sure that cars aren't driving on the wrong side of the road. But it is exciting. It's a long time coming and it's going to be great for William Street to really make that high street experience so much more walkable, enjoyable, nice to sit out in the old fresco, etc. So sorry, that was too additional. That's why it went on for a bit longer than planned. <laughs> OK. OK, so we're now going to the CEO for declarations of interest. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, uh, I've received five declarations of interest, the same four declarations of interest from the briefing session last week, uh, including from Councillor Castle in relation to item 7.1, management of Loftus Community Centre. Councillor Castle's children had been regular patrons of direct services at the centre and third party services for over 10 years. Uh, from Councillor Loden, declaration affecting impartiality in relation to item 11.4, Florida Athena Football Club. Councillor Loden declares that he plays indoor soccer with people who are members of the club and executive. In addition, a club member supported Councillor Loden's recent election campaign by displaying a poster on their fence. Uh, a declaration from Councillor Sally Smith affecting impartiality in relation to item 17.1, the management of the Loftus Community Centre. Councillor Smith discloses that she knows an employee working at the Loftus Community Centre in the capacity of a school associate. A declaration from, two declarations from you, uh, Mayor Cole, the first in relation to the uh, management of the Loftus Community Centre, confidential item 11.1, .1, the declaration of interest being that 17.1, uh, that uh, one of your children attended the Loftus Community Centre 3 Plus Kindy program in 2014 and have previously attended activities involving room hire at the centre. And the final declaration is from you, Mayor Cole, in relation to item 11.4, Florida Fina Football Club, uh, noting that uh, during your recent election campaign, a member of the Florida Fina Football Club displayed a campaign poster in their shop window in the city of Perth. At that time, uh, Mayor Cole was not aware that he was a mem board member of the Florida Athena Football Club. Thank you. Thank you, CEO. Um, so the items that have already been raised um, by members of the public gallery this evening are 17.1, 9.1 and 11.4, 17.1 being a confidential item. We do also have some... Um, uh, majority, absolute majority decisions on this evening's agenda. So that is 10.1 and is it just that one? 10.1. We also do need to pull forward the items where we're appointing sorry we do need to pull forward the items we're appointing members um, to uh, committees and um, etc. So that's 12.6, 12.7, 12.8 and 12.9. So 
Um, in addition to those items, we do have amendments on the table for 10.2. If there were any further items councils would, uh, council members would like to pull forward for debate, I'll go to you first, Councillor Hallett. Uh, just 10.2. Thank you. Councillor Castle, 12.5. Uh, Thank you. Councillor Wallace. Councillor Vitakis. Uh, Mayor, uh, 12.1 and 12.2, I think the lease on 246 and um, uh, number 13. 13.1. Yep, thank you. Councillor Loden. 11.1. Thank you. Councillor Toppelberg. Uh, nothing further, thank you. Councillor Smith. Councillor Gondoszewski. 12.3. Okay. Just bear with us for a moment. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, I will now read out the agenda item numbers proposed to be moved on block, which includes item items 9.2, and 12.1 or 12.10. So is that 12.1 and 12.10? Uh, sorry, that, sorry, just 12.10. 12, 12 and also just noting that 9.4 has been withdrawn by administration, designed WA Stage 2, and that will be coming back to the December meeting. What about 12.1? 12.1 is being pulled out for debate by yeah. Councillor Fatakis. Okay, can I have a mover and seconder to adopt the on-block items? Move Councillor Castle, second Councillor Hallett. All those in favour? Declare the on block items carried. So, the first item raised by a member of the public gallery this evening was 17.1, but given that's a confidential item, we will come to that at the end of the meeting behind closed doors. The next item raised was 9.1, which is number 48 and number 50, Cow Street, West Perth, multiple dwelling amendment to to approved. Can I have a mover and seconder? Moved Councillor Tobelberg, seconded Councillor Loden. Thank you, Mayor Cole. Um, I have a very, very close look at this, um, as I do always, but just in light of some of the questions that were asked uh, at the briefing and some of the conversation that's gone on, I guess the, the key issue, uh, the, well, there, there's two key issues for me. One is the, the change in the pla planning framework from a Vincent perspective was something of note that wasn't uh, properly identified in the report that we had at the previous meeting, um, uh, which was uh, well, what led uh, to the deferral from my point of view. Um, the, uh, what is significant is that there, the provisions in the regulations have also changed in terms of the vary varying of the provisions uh, with the retention of the heritage dwelling on site. Um, there are a few issues, I think, uh, overall with the development, with the proposal for uh, the, the two-stage construction. I think that there's a, a planning furphy in there where you can get a benefit by amalgamating an entire lot into one site and get a benefit across the whole site for the retention of the heritage dwelling and yet only develop half of it, which is then considered substantially commenced and who knows what happens to the other half, whether it does get developed or otherwise, but that's just a reality. The key issue, uh, and I think the questions from the community members who've been uh, opposed to the development in its uh, or the extension of time uh, is the issue of the height and the, the three storeys allowable and the five storeys that's proposed. Uh, 
the reality when you look at it is actually what's probably in error uh, or what's probably lagging behind is the uh, the council framework that we have. If you have a look at the time where those heights were approved, uh, this develop where they actually came into effect, this development uh, had an existing approval uh, already on that site. So those dwellings that, uh, that existed at the time were actually uh, about to be demolished. Uh, if you look adjacent to it, there's a four-storey development um, at four storeys to the street front, which is to the to the eastern side. And across the road, there's a number of three- and four-storey developments. So whilst on paper, Cow Street presents as uh, potentially something of character uh, that has uh, that is to be... Um, the, the development should be of, of a smaller scale than what is proposed here. Uh, the reality on the ground is that that's not the case currently. And I think that uh, what's proposed, uh, and remembering there is a current approval that exists until January, um, what is proposed uh, in light of that is uh, acceptable. It does, it, there are significant variations from, uh, from what the standards are on paper, but those uh, were dealt with at the original uh, approval and the, the framework has not changed substantially enough, in my view, to oppose the extension of time. So I will support the officer recommendation. Councillor Loden. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this item came to the October meeting as uh, Councillor Topperberg tests. Um, at that point in time, I was supportive of the development subject to the inclusion of the uh, ESD requirements that was subsequently included into the report this time round. So I remain comfortable with this development being approved. Thank you, Councillor Loden. Councillors, Councillor Gondoszewski. Thank you. I think ultimately um, with this one that we, um, since the deferral, the changes to the planning framework have been, I guess, uh, more fully investigated in terms of their impact on the previous decision, um, whether that the, um, there is some uh, similar provision, um, there is provision within the current uh, planning framework, and so when for considering whether this application is likely to be approved now, um, I think that yes, ultimately it um, has a four story presentation to the street um, that will be impactful in the streetscape. Um, its setbacks are pushing boundaries, its plot ratio is higher, um, but ultimately the Four-storey presentation is um, there's built form um, sort of incorporated into the roof form. There has been a consideration of um, uh, the impact of the dwelling by separating the um, building in terms of how it presents by into I think four components. So I think ultimately, whilst yes, there are um, there certainly is um, this is a development that warranted a good look and a second look in light of the changes to the planning framework. I think ultimately um, I do believe it is likely to be supported under the current framework and um, I think um, if we uh, we need to ensure that we've got other controls in place if we want to um, yes, uh, you know, restrict development within areas that have a high proportion of character dwellings. Um, so I guess um, I don't love it, but ultimately I, I think, you know, to be fair, I have to um, come to the point that I can support this application for an extension of time in this instance. Councils, Councillor Patakis. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I mean, I do have sort of similar feelings about the development to Councillor Gondoszewski, but that's uh, we're not here to debate uh, the design. I'm happy to support the officer's recommendation. Um, I'm satisfied with the report and the officer's assessment that was detailed in the report, and I thank, you, thank the officer for that. Um, just really uh, the assessment against the city's uh, LPS2 and the relevant element objectives of the R codes. Um, I thought it was quite uh, quite clear. With regards to the universal design uh, components, I do note that the developer can uh, does have the ability to refine the internal layout during the detailed uh, design stage um, to improve the accessibility for people with uh, disabilities or to enable some ageing in place. Um, and that's something I would um, 
you know, strongly like to see if that's at all possible. Um, um, it does increase the range of housing cho choices uh, offered by the development and from my experience will help meet an increasing um, segment of the market that I, that I know as we move forward. Um, all of the great things that the city is doing, um, it's not just appealing, the city's not just appealing to, to one age or demographic um, uh, segment, so it would be great to actually see local residents who are ageing in homes be able to move out and, and find acceptable properties within the area, so um, I will support the, the officer's recommendation. Councillors, any further comments? Okay, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? I declare it carried unanimously. Um, that concludes strategy and development for this evening, which is unusual. <laughs> can relax tonight. <laughs> so we'll move on to infrastructure. Oh, sorry, let me just check what came next from... No, the next item that was raised from the public gallery, we'll go to that first, which is 11.4. Um, this is Florida Athena Football Club Inc. Lease Final Report. I have a mover and seconder for this item, please. Move Councillor Loden, seconded Councillor Gondraszewski. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just want to note there's been a lot of work uh, by the club and administration in the last week or so to... to, to get this a bit further progressed. Um, I'm a soccer player myself. It's been 384 days since my last soccer game. Um, and when I first joined council, um, we had the flurry at uh, one of the things that came up relatively early on in that process was the Florida Athena Football Club and how we proceed with, um, with the lease. Um, that was quite awkward, I felt, at that time uh, from a council perspective, which doesn't necessarily have all the information. We were in this difficult position of a, what appeared to be a club that was quite closed off in many ways to the community um, and struggling to figure out how we could demonstrate that this was de deriving a benefit to our community. Um, I, I, as a councillor, I was struggling with how do we, how do we work with this. Florida is a, is a preeminent club here in WA. They've just recently had quite significant success in the, um, the WA League. Um, and we potentially thinking about what, what do we do with this lease? Do we not renew this lease? How do we change this lease to achieve the outcomes that we want to do? Um, we ended up at that point with a two-year lease plus an option for one. Uh, that two-year lease component is coming up now. This is why we're here today. Um, with the idea being that that was an opportunity for the club to, to work out where they fit in this, this space, what they were going to do, how they could, I guess, open their doors a bit more, also give administration some time to work through some of the, the, the issues, uh, get the club to provide feedback on some of the concerns that they had as well. Um, and it felt like for the first year we didn't see a huge amount of progress uh, from the reports that we saw, um, but we have seen um, a, a seismic shift in, in how Florida Athena is engaging uh, with the city and I think uh, how administration is also engaging with Florida Athena in the last year. I think a big part of that is the, the board members that have come on board and I really congratulate you guys for all your efforts in that space. Um, the other thing that did happen was uh, the $3 million grant which is um, is no small small feat. I, I very impressed you guys secured that. I, I wish we could do that as well for some of our other assets too. Um, any suggestions you have would be greatly appreciated. Um, and that's going to make a big difference for Florida Athena going forward as well. That $3 million can do huge things to upgrade the, the facility, to make the changes that are needed to help improve community access to it as well and provide those resources to our, to our community. Um, there's also been some huge improvements in the way the, the, the club is engaging with the wider community, particularly on a diversity side of things which is not just the, the gender side of things where they are seeing more women participating, but also getting uh, people with disabilities involved, which is personally a, an important one for me, and also a lot of youth, a lot of the, the young kids. My, my kids go to Mount Hawthorne, and I've seen a huge number of those, um, the kids at the school getting involved in soccer as, in, in recent years, which has been, which has been fantastic to see. Um, there's obviously still more work to be done in that space. Um, and I think, in my mind, one of the biggest things is the development plan, is what do we do with this, this $3 million? How does the club and the City of Vincent come to um, an agreement on what's the best way to spend those resources? I think we're probably 80% of the way there, but there's probably some further work to be done, which is what the, the report recommends around how that development plan will come back for endorsement. Um, 
I think the big sticking point here really, um, by the sounds of things, seeing the, the email that came through from the club and also uh, administration's response, the big sticking point is the lease duration. Um, I think all those other bits where there is differences of opinion between admin and, and the club can actually be resolved um, between those two groups and there's a, a genuine willingness by both groups to, to engage around that. So then the question becomes this 10 plus 5 or 5 plus 5. Um, I'm not convinced we're there as yet. Um, and I think in my mind the big thing is the development plan. One of the things that uh, administration provided as feedback is that we could look to provide an additional five-year extension on the existing lease once the development plan is in place. Um, I think once the development plan is agreed and, and we're ready to move forward, um, that ad additional five years on top of the existing five-year lease uh, would be a good fit because we, we are there. We'll see that continued engagement with the community and then we'll have a clear plan for how that asset is going to be used. Um, but at this point in time, I'm, I'm personally not prepared to move the, the amendment to propose a, five, uh, sorry, a 10 plus 5. Um, other councillors may have different views and I'm, I'm open to hearing those opinions as well and we'll take that into consideration. Um, but that's where I've ended up landing on this one. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm supportive of this recommendation and I'm pleased that we're here at this point. Um, I'm, uh, in some ways I would have uh, loved to be at the point where we were ready to embark on our new uh, shared use of the facility um, as early as possible, um, but I recognise that from a planning point of view that um, approving a nine-month extension to the current lease provides some um, certainty um, but also allows for some um, for further discussion to occur between the club and the city um, and also for the city to undertake um, planning to ensure that um, we have um, we see usage of the facility um, if we're going to see a change in tenure so I do appreciate that um, as Councillor Loden has said, this has been a long road to get here um, and I thank um, the administration and also the uh, club representatives for, um, and, I get, and also Mayor Cole for her role in just keeping that conversation going over um, what has been challenging times. I think ultimately we need to have pragmatic, um, practical um, approaches to these issues, um, but also we need to uh, recognise that we have um, long-standing, um, valued, uh, valuable um, community organisations and sporting clubs, and we need to. And I think that ultimately, that the city has gone through these negotiations and through these um, dis decisions, wanting to um, allow Florida Athena to demonstrate um, through the provision of um, financial planning, through community benefit statements, and through consideration of a dish open. Um, alternative models of tenure, um, that this is a club that is going to be responsive and dynamic and grow. And it is great to see that um, in recent years that they have um, engaged with their local community, with their school kids, that they have, I think it's 27 girls now playing. So um, fantastic and keep it going. Um, so look, um, I'm pleased to see that we're here um, and that this uh, recommendation um, provides some certainty, um, both for the nine-month extension of the current lease, but also for the tenure arrangements that will be um, arrange, uh, will be in place going forward um, in the 2020. So I'm very happy to support this one. Councillors, Councillor Fatakis. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, likewise, I'm um, very supportive of this. Of one of the the first uh, items that uh, came on uh, the agenda when the first meetings that myself and uh, Councillor Castle um, were dealing with, um, and one that took some time to get your head around the the history of it and be able to uh, appreciate the the work that had been done. Um, 
before then, but also to the huge amount of work that, that lay ahead. And um, there were many times, uh, many comments, and I didn't think, um, oh, well, other people said that they didn't think that we would get here. I was always hopeful that we would do, but I think it needed um, commitment from both parts, which we've uh, always seen. And I think for the first uh, time, um, we've got a board that I think really understands um, a lot of the terms that we're here looking at today. Um, I do also want to commend uh, the club for the work that they've done in really being able to uh, look at those areas that uh, Councillor Gondoshevsky um, looked at and that's um, with regards to the juniors and reaching out to the community and expanding the female membership and I think when you are challenged as a club to, to really stretch the bounds and, um, and whether that's challenged by your local government or challenged by um, the economy or challenged by your own within your own um, industry, um, I think the outcomes, we're starting to see some great outcomes. So well done to the club and the members for the work that you've been doing. Um, what I did want to um, ask, and a couple of questions that I've got um, of the director through you, Mayor, um, just to clarify a couple of the the terms that are here on the recommendations, if I may. Um, recommendation one, through you, Mayor, um, just the addition of the subject to the removal of the perimeter fencing by the city to enable um, public access. Um, I just really do want to get some confirmation um, on the timing, the intended timing of that. Um, I there's a, just a couple of concerns that I've got um, and the implications of uh, what the cost is uh, to the city of the removing of the fence, uh, the financial implications. Um, I could not see that referenced in pages 11 to 13 um, of the report, so I did want to actually get an understanding of the financial implications in terms of what the cost is um, and where that's been budgeted for. Um, if it is intended for it to be done at the end of this year, um, where is it? Um, where is the the, the money for it in terms of um, the current budget um, and would it not be best to actually be looking at um, addressing the perimeter fence until um, post uh, the, uh, the extension, so after September 2020. Director, I believe that's referenced in Clause 1 of the motion. It talks about subject to the removal of perimeter fencing by the city to enable greater public access. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, I can re uh, respond to that, uh, to note that um, there wouldn't be a large capital cost to remove that fence. Um, it's been there for 30 or 40 years. It's um, two and a half metres um, high um, with barbed wire, which is rusting, which presents a, a very um, aggressive interface between a community sporting facility um, and the rest of Britannia Reserve. Um, I think it would probably take about two days' labour just to... Uh, remove that fencing and that could be absorbed in under our normal operating expenses so it wasn't going to be a large capital cost uh, to the city. So with respect um, CEO through you Mayor, um, what is that amount? Yes, through you Mayor Cole, it's approximately $15,000 so $10,000 um, for the labour to remove and we're being conservative about $5,000 to have um, the material disposed of. So about two days labour. Thank you. And through you, Mayor, um, why was this, uh, this issue not actually addressed in the briefing, uh, the briefing meeting last week? Um, why has it actually been added um, as a recommendation um, today? And um, this is uh, really the, the first that we've been considering the removal of uh, the fencing as part of uh, the conditions on this. Uh, yes, through you, Mayor Cole, it was always the intent and that these discussions have, been, have occurred with the club for the last three, four months for that fencing to be removed by the city at the city's cost. Um, it was something that we were looking to do um, in the last three or four months. The club um, hasn't agreed to that to this point um, and during the course of these discussions it was obvious that it needed to be a clear resolution of council and part of um, this lease extension if it was to be removed. Um, if, you, if you recall, the briefing recommendation was actually for control of the facility to return to the city from the 1st of January, so we didn't need to have that in 
the resolution previously because we had complete control of that facility from the 1st of January under that recommendation. So that's the reason it's been added subsequently, just to clarify that it's important and it's a priority for the city to open that facility up to the broader community as soon as possible. Um, and part of that will be removing the fence and the club's lease would be subject to that occurring immediately. Um, I just also want to uh, address um, the recommendations for on um, just to, uh, it might just be defining a couple of things a little bit more uh, clearly. I know that these uh, issues 4.1.1, the financial management plan and the incorporation of those those documents, uh, do we not, not need to actually def start defining uh, some dates and putting some definitions on what we mean by past financial data? I mean, how far past are we intending to go back? Um, present, um, are we talking about current financial year? Um, do we not need to also define um, really what we mean by present or current? And the five-year project financial data, uh, when will that start? And similarly, um, the 4.1.13, the audited financials, again, what period uh, are we referring to there? Yes, through you, Mayor Cole, um, that's noted definitely. So past, we're talking about the past fi five financial years, um, noting that that's the term of the lease. Present is, is this financial year. Um, the five years are the five financial years that fall within um, the extended lease term. Um, and the order of financials apply to the five previous financial years as well as that current financial year. Um, I've drafted up an amendment um, which Sharon will put up on the screen if, um, to see if that addresses um, those concerns. And through you, Mayor Cole, if I might just add, 4.1.1v um, should be 4.1.2. So thanks for pointing that out as well, Councillor Fotakis. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, while we're actually going through there, um, may I just ask um, just one more question of clarity? Thank you. Um, recommendation 4.5, repairs and maintenance. Um, do we need to actually be clear about what areas that we're talking about here? We're talking about the areas outlined in um, attachment 7 um, that we're referring to earlier um, in recommendation 4. Um, just think for um, just moving forward, um, we need to be quite clear about what responsibilities the, the club has, what they're responsible for. Through you, Mayor Cole, if I've understood the question correctly, um, we so the five year option is for the lease that is, so it's basically an extension of that lease as approved. Um, which includes the area set out under attachment seven and listed in the in the text prior to that. So I think it is clear exactly what area the extended lease would apply to. I hope I have understood that question right. Um, thank you, uh, Director. So if it, is the amendment um, we're proposing the amendment now? Or do you want to actually well, that's amend? up to you, Councillor Patakas, but if we could have it up on the screen, please. Can I ask a question while we're looking at the amendment? I'm just questioning the importance of the audited financials for the past, all past five financial years. What um, benefit does that provide to the city in having that um, backward look into the financials? How far back do we need to go? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, my only comment on that would be that if 
the, the club is going to have their financials audited every year. Um, it would be valuable for the city to have fully audited financials so that we know that they've been verified um, for the term of the five-year lease that is being proposed here. So at that point, they should have that data. There should be no reason why they couldn't provide that to the city um, at that time or each year as they're audited. Um, it, is, it is valuable for the city to have those audited financials because they've been independently verified and there's no question about their veracity. Um, so you, you're saying it's important to have the past five years, the current as well as projected financials? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Sorry, Mayor. Um, I just want to get some clarity on the difference between uh, the past five uh, financial data and the audited financials um, of really what additional information that you think that we're going to get by um, mentioning that that twice. I mean, how much detail are we wanting to obtain? Yes, through you, Mayor Cole, there should be no difference between those two things. So that first point, you're, you're correct, that first point could be um, clarified just by saying... Um, audited financials for the past five years, present financial year and projected financials. So you could get rid of 4.1.13. Can, um, can we just um, amalgamate those two then, just as you've, you've said, that 4.1.1, um, number one and three? Shall I ask a fun question that's unrelated while we get the wording right? Great. So this is not actually... Um, I'm solid on the FAFC. As long as the director can concentrate on doing oh, both at once. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it might be to you. It may also be just a general question. Um, in terms of uh, Recommendation 9, that notes the administration will call for expressions of interest for the use of the stadium for summer usage. Um, just wondering if there is... Um, any particular criteria that will be applied to the assessment of those expressions of interest um, or how councillors may be able to um, contribute to the criteria in terms of the assessment of the expressions of interest um, to ensure alignment with our um, public open space strategy and some of our efforts in relation to girls in sport. Yes, through Mayor Cole, that's a very good question. Um, I must say I haven't given that significant thought. So I think it, um, I think it would warrant a discussion with council members on um, what the content of that expression of interest is um, because we don't have a clear policy and strategy that, would, that sets out um, our goals and uh, priorities in that space. So absolutely, I think a conversation at a council workshop and then a circulation of the draft expression of interest would be warranted. Okay, I think we have the um, wording for the amendment now. Councillor Fatakis, did you wish to move that amendment? Yes, I do, Mayor. Okay, do we have a seconder for the amendment? Seconded Councillor Loden. Do you just speak to it, Councillor Fatakis? Uh, no need. I think I've said enough on that one. Councillor Loden, anyone comment on the amendment? Okay, I'll put the amendment. All those in favour? Declare the amendment carried. We're back to the substantive. Councillor Toppelberg. Thank you, Mayor Cole. Um, so, got my, my confidence in what is proposed has been significantly boosted in recent weeks for a variety of reasons, but um, I'm going to propose an amendment, and whilst people are considering it, I'm going to ask if people can turn, please, to page 186, which is the last page of the report, which shows the proposed lease area. So the amendment that I'm proposing is that we change recommendation four to approve a 10-year lease to Florida Athena Football Club and also recommendation 4.1 for the option term to be five years and three months. And if I get a seconder, I shall explain why. Is there a seconder? Seconded council for Tyco. So currently Florida Athena has complete control over the full stadium, the pitch, all the outbuildings, the fence, the car parking, everything that's there. 
what we're talking about is a building that Florida Athena Football Club members built literally with their bare hands. It is uh, very much the heart and soul of the club and I think that uh, the current board has demonstrated both the will and ability to be able to maintain that. I don't think that the way that the lease terms are drafted and the shared licence or the shared use of the field in any way would impinge upon, or their existence in this building would in any way impinge upon it. To come back, if we look at how long this process has taken, all they've asked us for really is certainty and the longer term certainty um, we have been told for a number of years actually brings with it uh, the ability to gain plenty more funds uh, through, um, through, f through uh, I suppose, less traditional fundraising methods uh, and through sponsorship. Uh, because there is uh, seen, has seen a longer term tenure. The reason for the five years and three months is that it also would then align the end of the lease with the end of Perth Soccer Club's uh, option period at Dorian Gardens, which gives the city pretty much 15 years from next September to be able to look at football facilities within Vincent and perhaps between Football West, Florida Athena and Perth Soccer Club and other interested parties, we could actually look at a more strategic long-term plan. I think the idea of this lease potentially finishing five years before the lease is up at Dorian Gardens would be a significant impediment to some of those strategic discussions taking place. So I see there being sig uh, significant benefit long-term to actually having those two, uh, those two dates align, which is um, more in the option period. But if I have a look at the lease area and what the city and community can expect in terms of uh, their access to that space and in terms of the activities that can take place on it, I think it is in no way impeded by the occupancy of the building and the lease area that's proposed. And I don't think, um, given where I've landed personally in terms of my confidence in the, the board and the club to be able to move forward and the where we're at compared to where we were before, where we were pretty much told it's all or nothing and it's sacrosanct at $2,000 a year with the city pretty much paying everything else, which is where we were a few years back. Uh, I think that it's, uh, it's a reasonable request and I'm comfortable to support it. So I would ask uh, for others to consider it and that we look at a 10 year plus five year and three month term from next September or October. Um, can you just outline the wording of your amendment, please? Yep, so that was quite clear. So recommendation, uh, is it up there? So recommendation four, changes to 10 years lease. So the, the word five is replaced with 10. So that would finish on the 30th of September, excuse me, uh, the 30th of September 2029. Uh, and then the option term would be five years and three months, uh, which would then both conclude that would conclude on the 31st of December uh, 2034. Can I ask a question about... Um, let me just do my maths. It might need to be six years and three months if I'm looking to align them. I'll just go back to my first soccer club lease in a moment, but yes. In relation to the requirements that administration would like to secure around the development plan, um, and the completion of the KPIs, how would that fit into your proposed amendment and at what point? I'm, trying to th I'm only trying to consider an answer because I have an opinion about some of the, the content. I think that the issue of the asset management plan should be resolved and the facility management plan. I think <coughs> the audited financials are less relevant because if they've been paying their rent and they've been maintaining the building and the asset management plan is, exists, then the financials are their financials. That's my, that's my personal opinion on it. Um, but it may need, you are correct, it may need a further amendment to uh, require the asset management plan and the facility management plan to be reviewed at an earlier, at an earlier date, so 30 September 2024 or something of that nature. But I'll just double check my uh, soccer club lease as well, if you don't mind. And in relation to the development plan, I think that's quite critical too. Uh, so we would need to be six years and three months because it's 31st December 2035 is the end of the soccer club's lease. So it would be six years and three months would be the option period if the two were to align, which takes it to December 21, 30, uh, 2035. Um, 
Um, do you wish to speak to your amendment? You, had, you do have a seconder. Sorry, I, yeah, I was right. Just the maths, the maths in the original recommendation was wrong because five years from 2020 doesn't equal 2024. That's why it is five years and three months. But five years from 2020 gives you 30 September 2020, 20, 20, 25. So that should read 30 September 2030. So it is five years and three months. <coughs> Glad we're asking for their audited financials. Um, just in relation, CEO, do you wish to talk about the end? The, there's this, I think the administration has a slightly different view about the end of the lease of Perth Soccer Club. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, just to confirm our date for the end of the Perth Soccer Club lease is um, 31st of December 2037. <coughs> Can you confirm the date that that was agreed? Because the, the 10 plus 10 was in April 2015, commencing January 2016. And there were two subsequent council reports that came back where the lease fee was reduced. But, no, they, they came back twice to reduce the fee, but the lease date for the 10 plus 10, the last I could see was the January 2016. Through you, Mayor Cole. Um, the lease copy I've got here dated 9th of May 2018. The initial terms from sorry, um, 1st of January 2018 to the 31st of December 2027, and then there's a 10-year option term, so that would be until 31st of December 2037. OK, we have a live amendment. Um, do you wish to speak to it any further, Councillor Toppelberg, or I'll go to the seconder? Councillor Toppelberg, are you still having thinking time? Yeah, no, the, the, there's a mistake in the math still in number four. That it should be 2030 because so that that uh, that four is incorrect in the original recommendation anyway because that's not five years from 2020. So even if the amendment fails, that four will need to change to. A 2025 date anyway. Councillor Toppelberg, which four needs to change? Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm not following. Sorry. Recommendation four, currently, before yeah. the amendment, approves five years from 2020 till 2024. That's four years by my count. So yes, that will you're need correct. to change. So that regardless. would need to be 2025. Correct. Yep. But the proposed amendment is still 2030 regardless. So just to clarify, your amendment runs through to 2030 and then the five year and three month option in addition. I'll make it seven and three because the principle's still the same. We'll see how that goes. So we'll make it a seven year and three month option, which aligns it with the Perth Soccer Club lease. Okay. Uh, seconder. Fataka, sorry. Yeah. Before you go to the seconder, I just will reiterate, I know we've talked a lot about numbers, but I again urge people to have a look at that map and look at the area that we're actually talking about in the context of where the club has been for 40 years and what they're looking to have control over for I know we're now looking about 17 years as opposed to 10, but have a look at that area in the context. Uh, if you want to take the Google map version and actually have a look at the entire area, um, it is a, uh, a very small area of a very large uh, facility that the city uh, will, be, uh, will be managing, and obviously there's intent for there to be significantly uh, improved facilities on the ground uh, if, the, if and when the $3 million grant comes to fruition. But, um, as a proportion of the area, it is a, a building that is under 100% their control by condition anyway. Councillor Fatakis. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, look, I agree with Councillor Toppelberg. I think um, sometimes gets uh, lost in the side of um, long, um, you know, progress 
protracted negotiations, but we have a much smaller footprint here for a lot more rent than what's been paid in the past. There's also looking at those documents that we um, discussed previously, the 4.1.1 financial management plan. A number of those documents uh, will actually be required as part of the $3 million funding, so it's not as if council, um, in my opinion, are going to have a huge amount of risk by um, extending that and thinking that they're going, going to have to wait uh, 10 years to actually see those. Um, those documents are actually going to be required as part of that $3 million negotiation. So um, I'm, for that reason, happy to support an extended term. Councillors? Councillor Gonczewski? Yeah, I think, look, overall I, I do think I am convinced by the arguments around um, the connection of the club to the club rooms over a long period of time, the reduced risk to the city, as essentially associated with reduced responsibility for the club, making it much more likely that they are able to, they are going to be able to be a sustainable entity with, you know, these responsibilities. Um, I do think, though, that yes, the um, I suspect a further. Um, I think I would like to see, though, that the facility management plan and the um, asset management plan for the club rooms at an earlier point. But I guess that can be handled uh, down the road. So yes, I'm supportive of the amendment. Um, councillors, I'll speak to it. Uh, look, we're going from a recommendation from administration from five years to 17. It's a significant um, consideration. Sorry, just cl clarification. Sorry, Meg. Ten years plus year seven years and three months um, and it doesn't have this amendment doesn't currently set where the development plan comes into play or the um, KPIs um, that were discussed. Um, I don't think that we need to draw um, comparisons between the two soccer clubs. I think the two um, soccer clubs have operated um, incredibly differently and that the long-term lease for the Perth Soccer Club was really tied to um, significant payback on uh, major investment from the City of Vincent as well as the Department of Sport and Rec at the time under a CSRFF um, grant. Um, I don't think I can support the amendment as it stands because I think that we really do need to see that development plan happen early. And I think that's a key informing document. Um, and I did favour the approach of actually looking at a five-year lease until we get that development plan underway. And then I'm happy for that to come back to council for consideration for a, a longer period um, before that five years um, is up, because I think that that um, really does set the stage for the future of um, Lidda Stadium. Um, so I'm hesitant to move to 10 plus seven, um, and I don't see an alignment with Perth Soccer Club because I think that the two, the clubs have, um, the way that they have um, moved forward um, and their financial situation, etc., is vastly different. Um, I'm also just conscious of the fact that um, administration has had some hesitancy about, um, about moving to a full 10-year term without really being clear about how the KPIs work. Um, for me, I still don't understand if we have KPIs and have requirements and they're not met within a 10-year lease, what does that actually mean? Is it actually a forfeiting of the lease? That's never really been um, explained. Uh, so I would prefer to see either a 10-year lease that has KPIs where we know that if they're not met, then the lease can't continue, and I'm not sure of the legalities of that, or I would favour sticking with the five-year lease and then getting through the development plan um, and having a clear path forward for the club so that we can then move to the further five-year option quickly and in advance of the um, expiration of that first five years um, based on the receiving of that information. And I think that the report does provide a clear pathway to get there. Um, also just conscious of some of the um, some of the commentary that has happened since Friday, um, I think you know, that we are making incredible progress here, but I think that when we are still receiving information from the club saying that they want to be the sole vendor at all events, etc., I think we still have a way to go in terms of talking through what the shared arrangement actually looks like. Um, that I have absolute confidence in the club to look after their club rooms 
and I think that that is not a problem at all but I think that when you're starting to explore options to look at summer sports coming in who may wish to run a canteen, have some access to um, spaces to meet, to hold events etc and you've got one club room um, there, what does that actually look like? How, how is that explored? And I think that um, we're looking at a nine month extension of our lease under full exclusive use plus a 10 year term plus seven years and three months. Um, most of our leasing arrangements at the city, although we are still waiting on our leasing framework, are five plus five. That is um, a model that we have adopted. I think Perth Soccer Club was very different because of the major capital outlay that occurred. Um, the city is effectively offering to underwrite the $3 million grant in order to secure that and I think that that is a good thing for the club and for the city and the benefit to the club is that they no longer have to take that financial responsibility of life cycle assets, maintenance costs and actually proving the financial sustainability to be able to not only take, continue to maintain the full uh, lease over Lydda Stadium but to then take on the life cycle costs of maintaining a new three million dollar asset and it has significant advantage to the club for the city to take that on and take on that responsibility. So um, I just think that we do still have a way to go in terms of, of securing the grant on behalf of the club to uh, agreeing what facilities are at Litter Stadium to going through a EOI for a summer sport and understanding what does that summer sport actually need when they're operating from the site and do we need to have more of a discussion about um, access to the club room. I mean the club room lease of with all leases it is about you know quiet enjoyment but at the same time I think that there is a discussion to be had about what facilities are currently on site and what you know what access and how people access canteen etc because we know that with all sporting clubs that having the ability to um, have run a canteen etc is part of you know bringing in revenue so for me um, I just feel that we're getting a little bit away from ourselves to start talking about 10 plus 7 and 3 months um, and I do think that we can certainly get to a point where the club feels that they um, can meet everything they need to do to secure that 10 years and I think that we've set the pathway clearly, um, but I think that we're still needing to talk through the development plan and actually have um, in place those requirements. And the amendment that's before us at the moment doesn't actually set the pathway to deal with the development plan and those KPIs in a timely way that I would be satisfied with. So at this stage, I don't support the amendment. Are there any further speakers on the amendment? Councillor Loden. Just a clarification around the um, the food issue. As far as I can tell, there's nothing in the recommendation that dictates how a canteen would you be used, or that any specific um, like a food vendor coming on site would be prohibited or anything like that. Is that correct? Yes, through Mayor Cole, there's nothing prohibiting food vendors or the establishment of another club room for a summer sport that had its own canteen. No. Um, I totally take Councillor Toppelberg's point around the size of this, this, uh, the actual lease. That's it, it's something I probably hadn't really appreciated as I thought through this. Um, I am supportive of the 10-year proposal, um, but I don't support the, the amendment as it sits without the removal of, particularly for me, the uh, facility management plan with an earlier deadline on it. Um, so I would support an alternative recommendation, uh, which I expect will come forward depending on what happens from here. Um, I did have one final question as well. If um, we were to hypothetically say that the um, facility management plan was required within two, three of years, if that was not delivered in that time frame, what would be the consequences for the lease? Would it mean that the lease would be broken or is it just uh, that's, that's what happens and, and tough luck? Yes, through Mayor Cole, there certainly is the ability through the lease to require um, an outcome within a particular time frame, and if that isn't achieved, then the lease they would be in breach of their lease, and the lease could be broken. Correct. Councillors, we're speaking to the amendment. Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour? All those against? 
I declare it lost. We're back to the substantive. Councillor Toppelberg. Thank you, Mayor Cole. Um, I'll keep moving amendments and then I'll maybe speak later to the substantive. So um, <laughs> this one is a little bit complex, so I apologise. So it would be a change to 4.1, and the, the subsequent numbers will have to be changed as well. So 4.1, delete the words option terms. That'll come later. And five years. So this, these are actually the terms of the lease. So it'll be subject to, so this is the terms of the lease, subject to the club facilitating full and open access to the community and other sporting clubs. 4.1, yes, 4.1. And then after the word clubs, no later than 30 September 2025. So effectively this is within the first five years of the lease. So no later than 30 September 2025. The next words continue. Council endorsement of the site development plan, the completion and submission of the following. Get rid, get rid of keep the key performance indicators, 4.1.1, uh, so after the word clubs, so where it says, uh, I'll get to the numbers of the lease in a second, but from 1 October 2020 to 30, uh, that is for the stadium club rooms including, uh, so that's for, sorry, for 4, so 4.1 would just say Actually, subject to the club facilitating full and open access to the community and other sporting clubs. Semicolon. It's, it is clunky, but it's given the wording that's there, it's the easiest way to do it. No later than 30 September 2025. Council endorsement of a site development plan. Could I just ask a question at this point? Given that the federal government um, may change within five years... I think there is an impediment and a will of the club as well as the city to move forward with a I development 100 plan. I 100% agree, but that's as it's written currently, which is I was just I'm happy to make it oh. way sooner. But the way it's currently written, it, would you be open it, to um, request to that being a condition within at least you know 12 to 18 months? So uh, let's say no later than 30 September 2021, which is effectively two years from now, but uh, one year from the commencement of the of the revised lease. So uh, open access to community and other sporting clubs, no later than 30 September 2021, council endorsement of a site development plan and the completion and submission of the following. And then 4.1, one can stay financial man management plan that incorporates. You can call them KPIs if you want. I just said sub submission of the following, but you can call them KPIs if yeah, we can keep them there. So instead of uh, what now says audited, I would just say uh, audited and, pro and projected financial data as requested by the city. I know, I'm seeking to amend it so that it's not, uh, you know, I'll, we'll leave that as it is, that's fine, I, that can come later. Um, so the rest can stay as it is, audited as financials, uh, and then, um, and so after the word and with audited financials, because we want those same dates, don't we? 2021? Um, I think that if you're going to be putting forward a development plan, this would be good information to have at the same time. But I think the critical factor, and I think the club is also recognises this, that that development plan to actually try to secure that grant is critical and needs to be happening in a timely fashion. Uh, so... I would just say, 
after audited uh, audited financials and no later than 30 September 2021 provision of an agreed and in the next two can stay as they are asset management plan and facility management plan. Yeah. Yeah, and then so and apologies in the gallery, but we are trying to get this to reflect the will of council. Um, Councillor Doppelberg, I'm just asked, being asked for some clarification. Are you saying that this is a ten that you're seeking no. a ten year lease? No, no, I haven't got. I haven't done the lease terms yet. This is a new amendment. I was just fixing those clauses. I'm coming right. back to the lease okay. terms in a sec. All right. Are you seeking to do this over a number of amendments, or are you seeking to no, do was, that? No, no, I was just waiting till the wording's right. So, uh, yep. So that's fine. So now we go back to, and I'll take the advice of my esteemed former real estate colleague to my left. We will go back to number four. I'm reading the room, we'll go for, oh, I don't know, Joan. All right, we'll go for that. Oh, you know what, I'm going to, nah, well, you can go afterwards if that fails. So, 10 year lease from October 1, 2020 to 30 September 2030, and the option term at seven years and three months. If I get a seconder, I will speak to it again. Is there a seconder, Councillor Fatakis? Thank you. So um, I think that makes, well, hopefully makes it clear for some people as to what the, what the critical things are that we need. But in terms, and I do want to be a little bit clearer about the intent of aligning the lease to the end of the lease for Perth Soccer Club. I respect very much... So um, the, this isn't about comparing the operations of the two uh, soccer clubs or football clubs in any way. This is about giving the city a real opportunity to have a look at the football facilities and the way that it supports football within the city. And I think that one of the key ways to do that is if you have alignment of the leases of the two biggest clubs <coughs> that, uh, that have the, the biggest requirements, the biggest membership, uh, and certainly are um, both the biggest contributors uh, and draw on the city's resources uh, in terms of our facilities. So this isn't about saying per Soccer Club looks like this and we'll try and make Florida Athena look the same or, or that we, they need to match each other in terms of financials or membership or otherwise. It's actually about giving uh, some sense of strategic uh, power back to the city and the community to be able to say, if we want to have a long-term vision for football in the city, the two biggest clubs uh, will have an alignment of their leases for the first time, and at that point we'll be able to, or hopefully, somewhere over the next 15 years, we'll be able to look strategically at those facilities and what the requirements are for the community. So I think that's a, a key difference with the way in which some of it was maybe interpreted with the amendment as it was raised before. Um, but I am comfortable, given the lease area and... Uh, what we are talking about, that this is, uh, provides a great option going forward. I also note that um, the Mayor's concern that she raised earlier about the um, management of the, um, the potential new facility, the subject of the grant, has nothing to do with this current lease. That would be sitting in its own terms and would have to be written into this lease agreement or otherwise at, at that point. Um, and I also note that the Mayor's reticence about uh, I do understand about the um, the, the provider or being the, the service provider for food or otherwise, and those are some logistics that need to be sorted out between now and uh, the end of September next year. 
but I think exactly what the mayor was talking about is the possibility is exactly what the club is asking for the opposite of, which is to make sure they have exclusive use over these club rooms. Uh, I think that if we're talking about shared licence offering a facility whereby the city can dictate who can and can't, can't who can and can't come into the club rooms, that's the polar opposite of what Florida Athena have been asking for. So for me, I'm quite clear that leasing this premises means that the decision as to who enters that premises and how uh, it operates is the decision of the, the club in line with their obligation uh, to provide full and open access to the community and other sporting clubs uh, more broadly. So I'm comfortable that this is in line with the intent of the club but also uh, the, long -term in the long term strategic interest of the City of Vincent. CEO has just asked to speak and I'll allow it. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, uh, just to, um, not in response directly to the proposed amendment, but just a bit of context in terms of the discussions we're having with the club. Uh, we've made um, huge progress in these working group discussions. We essentially have hopefully less than 12 months because I can't see any benefit in having them any longer than 12 months. Over the next six to nine months, uh, we need to work very closely with the club to um, have a site development plan for council's endorsement to submit a business case uh, to the federal government for that $3 million. So these um, discussions are happening. The working group's working cooperatively and collaboratively, and we've got a, a, an agreed vision on how to um, better integrate uh, the stadium with the rest of Britannia Reserve. Um, my small hesitancy about um, the longer lease term is that uh, there's literally no way we could um, anticipate some potentially other options which could involve a bigger scale redevelopment of that site and these are options which we just may not know are out there and these opportunities could arise over the next 12 months or next two or three years um, which could um, involve um, possibly a larger redevelopment of that site uh, to achieve um, sporting and community outcomes. Sorry, just a question. The only impediment to that would be the agreement of the club if they have a lease over the, over the, the space. Is that correct? Uh, through you, Merkel, uh, yes, on, on that particular site. Just to clarify that they wouldn't prohibit any of those activities occurring anywhere else on the site aside from the specific boundary of the lease. Is that so if... Um, softball wants to come and build a big facility, they could come and build a big facility right next door to Florida. Is that fair? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, with the, the city would have to consider and uh, approve that. Uh, but there is, well, the, the big elephant on that site is a um, ageing um, grandstand. Um, it is not at end of life, but it's um, certainly so far advanced in its life that um, it wouldn't be worth investing a huge amount to um, rehabilitate that to um, contemporary standards. Um, to uh, physically remove and uh, readjust that site if that over the next five or ten years that stadium needed to come down, that would necessitate a complete rethinking of the built form over that elevated area over a mound. Um, I, uh, I, I'd be hesitant to um, essentially lock in an outcome where we couldn't um, discuss with the club a better use of uh, the built form and how it integrates with Britannia Reserve because at the moment um, it is the mound uh, which presents the visual barrier um, and of that integration between the, the sporting club and the reserve. So there could be, uh, to say another way, there could be a, a, a much bigger redevelopment um, uh, opportunity there, which we aren't contemplating yet, which uh, could achieve all those uh, outcomes that the club and the city would want, but it may not in involve um, the built form around that site as it currently is. And just to clarify where you said it may achieve everything the club and the city want, if it did that, Presumably the club would approve whatever it was. If someone's building a $30 million facility on the site that's going to accommodate the club, it would be a better standard than what they, what their lease. They would, it would clearly be in their interest to be supportive or provide their consent. Would that not be a reasonable assumption? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, that, that would be, be the club's decision at the time. Could we please have the amendment on the screen? 
Um, so we have the second amendment. We have it's moved. It was seconded by Councillor Batakis. Um, I just want to ask about the way in which this leasing arrangement would work. If the club did not provide that documentation within that time frame, what would the status of the lease be? Through Mayor Cole, in relation to um, the development plan, they would be in breach of the lease. Um, and then in relation to the other requirements, they would would not have met the requirements to extend the term by seven years and three months. Sorry, so that relates to the asset management plan and facility management plan. So if they weren't provided by the 30th of September 2021, the club um, wouldn't be eligible for the seven year and three month option term at the end of the 10 years. So it wouldn't have any ramification for the 10 year period, but it would at the end of that period. So, sorry, the amendment talks about those other, those other documents being required no later than 30th of September 2021. We had been talking to the club about inclusion of KPIs. Are you saying that that's simply a request and that if it's not met, the lease would continue? Through Mayor Cole, in relation to the development plan, the lease wouldn't continue, they would, the, the lease would end. So if that wasn't provided by the 30th of September 2021, the other two documents, the asset management plan, the facility management plan, the club would then not have met the requirement to have the lease extended by five, by seven years and three months. So that option term, they would not, no longer be eligible for the option term. Oh, yes, you're correct. No, you're correct, Councillor Tobin. My apologies. Yes, so they would be in breach of the lease if those documents weren't provided So what does that effectively that mean line. if you're in breach of the lease? What's the status of the lease if you're in breach of the lease? The city could terminate the lease at any time. OK. Um, Councillor Fatakis, you are the seconder. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to go back to, I, I mean, I like the fact that we've uh, trimmed down those times and given certainty when those uh, key documents um, are required. Um, I also um, just reiterate that a lot of those documents are required as part of that $3 million grant, so it's good to pull those in, and I do expect that um, we won't be um, here in 2021, September, um, with that grant um, application still sitting in limbo, so I, I take those comments from the, the CEO. Um, I do like the idea of not just being facility-focused, but being um, sport um, and industry-focused and looking at um, that vision of um, a sport and a key sport like soccer and how we will approach that that sport with a bit more of a, of a broader vision. What I am concerned about when we're looking at um, discussions here about a club room, so again that footprint of what we're discussing has come down and when we are considering other future um, options, I'm wanting a little bit more clarity about the CEO's intentions of what he means um, about um, future options and what that would mean about uh, future use of the club rooms, which is a key part about what we're, lo we're looking at here. So um, I just want a little bit of clarity about the comments that you made earlier. Uh, th through you, Mayor Cole, um, uh, it was just an observation that if you're looking to maximise um, sporting and community access at the moment, the impediment um, for the integration with Britannia Reserve and the stadium is the fact that um, uh, it is essentially an old velodrome and we've um, uh, the club rooms and the stadium have been built uh, on an elevation, so um, it would be easier to integrate, including new change rooms, if there was um, a, a rethink of the orientation of that site, including potentially levelling some of the mounds to be able to provide an at-grade access between the reserve um, and the um, soccer pitch. Okay, so but um, when we're looking, at, we're looking at considering the terms of this. I just fail to really see where we've had any indication that the club would be an impediment to that. 
uh, through you, Mayor Cole, uh, the, the club wouldn't be an impediment, impediment to that because we will be de um, pursuing the development plan um, jointly, uh, but that development plan hasn't been written or drafted yet and Council hasn't considered it, so um, we haven't been able to present any options on what the best um, built form uh, and um, integration plan would be uh, for new change rooms and better lighting uh, and making uh, that stadium site currently divided by um, a large mound, which is the old velodrome, um, with the Britannia Reserve and, and the rest of um, and, and the car park on the other side. Council Patakis, are you speaking to the amendment? Um, look, yeah, I've got no further comment to, to make on the amendment. I'm happy with the amendment where, where it sits. I think those, um, like I said, uh, pulling those terms down does actually uh, really trim that time, time frame down and add a, a lot more certainty to um, ensuring that those key documents are um, uh, going to be produced by the club. Um, I think um, we're also looking at the club working uh, quite closely with uh, with the city um, and continue to work closely with the city for the pursuing of that three million dollar um, grant. Um, but I do I, I don't want um, uh, question marks on the future about possibilities to really impede consideration of what we've got on the table at the moment. Um. I just want to ask a question. Is the option at whose discretion or is there a discretion? I'm asking you as the mover. Well, the, to me it's clear the option is the option of the lessee like any well, other lessee. commercial. Okay, so it's effectively a 17 year, three month lease. Subject to the completion of? At the two year mark, okay. Um, I just want to ask a question of the director. I know that we are yet to see this before council, but how are we looking with the draft um, tenure, or what do we call it, the draft property management framework in terms of standard leasing arrangements? What sort of term would the city be recommending to council for terms, um, leasing terms? Through you, Mayor Cole, in the draft property management framework, it's proposed that a commercial type lease like this would be by negotiation, so the term would be up to council to determine. Thank you. Councillors, speaking to the amendment. Okay, look, I have learnt from past council setting very long leasing terms that it's not wise. I'm happy to support a 10 year lease with the two year. Um, requirement to provide the development plan, although I think we really do need that within 12 months, and to provide the financial information as per the amendment, but I do not support a 17-year, three-month lease. I think that is past practice. I think that has got this council into significant issues in terms of moving forward and looking at, you know, what happening in 17 years. That's an extremely long time ahead. I think when we launched the community plan, we talked about the fact that um, at the time, 10 years before the community plan was being put together, iPhones didn't exist, just to you know, give an indication of the way that times are changing. So um, this is not specific to Florida Athena. I'm happy to support 10 years because I think that that now delivers what we discussed and what we discussed at the Friday meeting about KPIs being put in place. So I'm happy to honour that discussion and to support that, but I will not support a 17-year lease um, pretty much going forward, given the history of issues that we've confronted in dealing with long leasing arrangements um, across the city of Vincent. And I would urge extreme caution to council members to start revisiting leases of that length. So I support the first part of the amendment, just to be clear, 10 years with the requ with requirements, but I don't support the wording with a seven year plus three months option term. Councillor Loden. I just wanted to clarify because Councillor Toppleberg said that it is a seven year lease at the uh, uh, leasee's option. I just wanted to check if that's also administration's view. Yes, through you, Mayor Cole, that's administration's view. Um, I tend to agree with the Mayor. I'm happy with a 10 year lease with a seven year option at the City of Vincent's discretion, but not a 
ten year lease with seven year option at um, Florida Athena's uh, discretion. Councillors, any further comment on the amendment? I'll put it. All those in favour? All those against? I declare it lost. Back to the substantive. Councillor Loden. I'll uh, move the amendment, but pulling out the, the as per Councillor Toppleberg's previous one, but pull out. Well, I'll take some advice on how we can basically make that amendment the same, but with the seven years at the City of Vincent's option. And if you can make that happen, that would be great. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I will add those words after the seven years plus three months. So actually, that's a valid point. So just the same one, just delete the seven-year anything reference to the option. And so it's a 10-year lease, and then in 10 years' time we can come back and have another discussion around seven years and three months, five years, four and a half years. So we have an amendment before us which is the exact same um, wording but with the removal of an option of three years, seven years plus three months, meaning that it is a 10-year leasing term with a requirement to provide a development plan and the financials at the two-year mark. It's been moved by Councillor Loden, seconded by Councillor Gondoshevsky. Do you wish to speak further to it? No. Councillor Gondoshevsky, does anyone wish to speak to the amendment before us, Councillor Castle? Through you, Mick. I just have a question. Um, could administration outline the practical difference between uh, what we started with, which was five plus five, with the requirement for certain documents and information to be provided um, at that stage by the end of the first five years, I presume, um, and, and this current amendment, given that we've, we've landed on... 10 years, but the requirements have moved forward. Can you just give us a, a bit of um, guidance on how that's different in practical terms, given the context of what we're expecting to get and when? Through you, Mayor Cole, it appears that the only difference is that the time frame for those requirements has been brought forward to the 30th of September 2021, and that the error, the 2024, has been corrected, which is a positive as well. I'm just going to go to the CEO. Are, are we sure? Because I think that because it required these reports to come back, I just would like to just clarify because I had slightly different advice. Uh, uh, through you, Mayor Cole, we were discussing with uh, the club the language on Friday, the language at Council's discretion and uh, the way the report was drafted um, was uh, in terms of that discretion would be about um, council satisfaction of those uh, KPIs, which are um, full and um, open access to the club rooms, um, the financials and the facility management plan, uh, and the endorsement of a site development plan. Um, so that I might just ask the director just to clarify: is the language at council's discretion necessary um, in uh, the original? recommendation regarding uh, the plus five option? Yes, Sri Mayor Cole, uh, the, the language around at council's discretion or to the council's satisfaction um, isn't essential. Essentially that, that information needs to be provided to the city's satisfaction, which is council satisfaction. Um, the development plan we presented to council, so yeah, it's, it's not essential. It really depends on whether council wants to see the financials, asset management plan, facility management plan, um, or not. So that, and that wording isn't, it wasn't in the recommendation and isn't included here. Just to clarify, so in practice, if we stuck with the original recommendation, it was a very good question, and I did ask this offline, I should have asked it. Um, at the five-year mark under the original recommendation, would a report come back to council at that five-year mark to approve that five-year term, or would it simply flow on if the club had provided that information? Through you, Mayor Cole, if council had in adopted the development plan already and all of that information had been provided to administration satisfaction, then it's possible that would have just rolled on 
yes. So there was no requirement for it to come back to council under the recommended wording. Good to know. Councillor Castle. Uh, just another question. Um, I realise we this got amended a lot on the fly, but reading it now, I'm just wondering, is there a reason why, or perhaps it's just strangely worded, is there a reason why financial management plan and life cycle cost analysis don't appear to be covered by the 30 September 21 deadline? Could we simplify it just to say all of these things by that date? Um, because that, that's confusing right now and, I'm, and I, I'd be concerned that that's also confusing for the lessee. I think that Councillor Castle has highlighted a, an issue that would require clarification. Um, do you have suggested wording, Councillor Castle, that you'd like to put forward? Well, we could just simplify it by saying, subject to the club, no later than 30 September 2021, completing the following or some other words, and then listing all of those things, facilitating full and open access, endorsement, council endorsement, just itemise them in the same way they are under 4.1.1, but all under a heading of say must be provided by that day. Does that make sense? So, Mayor Cole. Sorry, there's two different things here. So the city will be endorsing the site development plan because that's going to be a partnership and then the club would needs to provide that information. But yes, I agree that both should be subject to the same date and that's not currently clear. Um, and it could simply say at the end, subject to the club providing the following no later than 30 September 2021, which is there. It's just about moving, providing the following further along into the sentence. Yep. Yes. So um, if you could just hold that, we'll come back to it. Yeah, great. Doing well tonight, guys. Okay, so we're speaking to the amendment on the 10-year term removing the... Um, yep. Any further comments? Okay, I'm going to put it. All those in favour? All those against? <laughs> Declare it carried with Councillor Wallace and Councillor Castle voting against. Councillor Castle, your amendment. Yes, through you, Max. Can I move an amendment along the lines of the words we just talked about, which I can't remember now? <laughs> I think it's simply to... Can I make a suggestion? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so it says subject to the... So 4.1 says subject to the club facilitating full and open access uh, to the community and other sporting clubs and then put in the words and no later than 30 September 21. Sorry, that's... No. Uh, going up? Oh, okay, sorry, we're going again. So we're in 4.1, after the word sporting clubs, it's in the second line of 4.1. Sorry, I'm goes. just going to cut in because I think this is overcomplicating. All it needs to say is in the last sentence is, and the completion and submission of the following key performance indicators by the club no later than 30th September 2021. You then have to change the years because you have to say two years, not five years, because you can't get five years financial data on a two-year lease. And then you're saying for the remainder of the option term, which is five years, which is not. They've got eight years at that point. Well, that's fine. We can work through that. For the remaining... Just honestly, really would have been good to have some advance notice. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you rather be back here in four and a half years debating it again, Emma? Thank <laughs> you. 
I think we'd need to take out the first words of no later than no later than Oh, is that relating to the endorse? There's two there's two oh, separate okay. things happening okay. here. There's okay. an endorsement Sorry. of a development Undo plan that. and requirement of information. And, and thirty September twenty one there's eight uh, there's eight years left on the lease, not seven. Well there's actually nine because it only starts from twenty twenty. We could just say for the remaining financial years of the lease option. Perhaps we can just take out the numbers because we're tripping over ourselves here, please. OK, are you happy with the wording mover of the amendment? I just, want, I just have a question about why we've changed the first five to two. So was the intention only ever to require them to provide audited financials for the period of this lease, which at that point is two years and previously it was five? Yes, through you, Michael, that's correct. We wanted to ensure that the club had forewarning of the requirement for audited financials and we weren't requiring information that they may not have. Can I have a seconder, please? Seconded Councillor Toppelberg. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Castle? Councillor Toppelberg, please save us. Don't speak to it. <laughs> Can I put the amendment? All those in favour? Declare it carried unanimously. We're back to the substantive. Would anyone like to speak to the substantive? I would, because I feel that my comments may be perceived negatively by the club, and it certainly wasn't intended to be. I'm actually just going to comment that where we've ended up is that we've circled back to what was pretty much originally proposed in the um, in the motion, um, but we have required the club to provide that in the two-year mark. And I think that's achievable and I don't think that's an issue and I think that the club would agree that the development plan is the critical document that we need to move forward. Um, I just do want to clarify that my comments about not being comfortable with the 17-year lease is universal. That's just because of um, the fact that we're really moving away from long, long-term tenure because, as we have realised, things change rapidly. But I'm very happy for the club to continue and to have this 10-year tenure of the club rooms. Um, I did want to comment um, that I think that... Um, that we do have a very bright future ahead, that we have a fantastic opportunity in working together from this point forward in securing that grant, which will be of significant benefit to the club and to the community, and um, that this does secure um, Florida Cena at Litter Stadium for some time to come and that that is a good thing. It was never the intention of me in going through all of these discussions over the years to not have Florida Cena at this site, but to actually work towards having something Thing that is both achievable and manageable for the club, who, to be frank, we have to be, it's all there in the report, has had financial difficulties over the past years. And I think this will actually put the club in a really good position going forward and that the city um, will bear a lot of that responsibility in taking this forward. And the city does that because there is a benefit to the community, there is a benefit to the long-term sustainability of Florida Athena, and there is an opportunity for the city to explore having greater use of um, litter stadium, buy a summer sport, taking down the fence, creating greater access and really connecting Britannia Reserve to Litter Stadium. That has always been the objective. It's never been about not supporting Florida Athena. Um, you're doing extremely well in the league. You're a great club. You've been really participating in the community um, and that's fantastic to see. So um, I think that we, sorry about that difficult performance tonight, I absolutely think that the city has been very um, clear all the way through this process where we have been dealing with the club. We have suffered this time round from late items. Um, we have had the final report just being delivered to us yesterday. We've been meeting with the club as late as Friday. It is a genuine attempt to get across the issues and to deliver a good outcome for all parties. So a bit of a stumble there at the final blocks, but I think that we have landed on a really good outcome and I'm really proud of the relationship that's forged between the city and the club.
I think it holds us in a really good position going forward and I'm really happy to endorse the motion which has been amended a lot but kind of ended up where we were at the beginning um, so but I'm really happy with where we've landed I'm really happy that the club will be continuing at Litter Stadium which is their home and that has never been in question so um, Thank you very much to the club members, to the board. Thank you for having us on Friday. We appreciate the positivity in which you've engaged with us and we think that this is, um, you know, this just leads to a great partnership between us. So very happy to support the amended motion before us, which is very much like the original. Any further comments on the substantive? Councillor Loden. Just a clarification, because um, the advice I'd previously received was that the five years was at the city's discretion, um, but and so just and I recognise the director confirmed that if after five years they had um, met all those KPIs, then they would have automatically rolled over into another five-year lease. Is that accurate? Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. It's also confusing that the recommendation to council has changed from the briefing to the council meeting as well. The wording has changed, and I think that's created some of the confusion. Would you agree, Director? Yes, through Mayor Cole, as I said out in that email on Thursday night, um, we, we had a discussion with the club. Um, it was always our intent to be very clear about what the requirements were of the club through the working group meetings. Um, the club asked for that to be clarified in the report. Um, we agreed that that was a good outcome for everyone to have certainty going forward um, and so that's how the, the report was updated and why the report was updated between the briefing and council meeting. Any further comments before I put the motion? This is the final vote on the substantive motion. Okay, I'm putting it, all those in favour? I declare it carried unanimously. Thank you everyone in the public gallery for your patience and thank you Florida Athena Football Club for reaching this good outcome with us. Okay, it's eight o'clock, we're two items in. How's everyone feeling? <laughs> Our newest councillor has left the room. <laughs> I don't blame him. Okay, we're now going to move through the items sequentially that haven't already been moved on block or dealt with um, debated, which are only two, just to remind you. So we're moving on to 10.1, use of World Square to deliver free meal service to people who are experiencing homelessness. This is an absolute majority decision required. Can I have a mover and seconder, please? Move Councillor Gondoshevsky, seconded Councillor Fatakis. Um, thank you, Mayor Cole. I'm um, pleased to support this item. I've been... Um, Actually, I've been very inspired in discussions that I've had with both Manor Inc. and Uniting Care West. These are both organisations that are run by competent and passionate people that have the, um, you know, have put their best efforts and so much of their time um, and their expertise into supporting um, people at risk of homelessness and vulnerable members of our community. Um, I think that this is a um, sensible approach in terms of um, managing a transition um, and I uh, will keep it brief but I'm, I'm looking forward to ongoing discussions um, going forward and, and I think that this will ultimately um, work in well with the city homelessness framework and how there's ultimately really looking to um, reduce duplication in services, get people, um, the, the organisations that are working in this sector um, working together doing what they do well, um, and uh, I think that this ultimately will be um, I'm, I'm very hopeful and, and I really, really hope that, um, that this can um, benefit our community um, and also will lead to um, other opportunities for partnerships going forward. Councillor Fatakis. Um, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, um, 
absolutely agree with um, with Councillor Gondoshevsky's uh, sentiments, and I'm happy to support this. Um, the meal and support services provided by Manor Inc are absolutely essential, and for that, um, I'd like to thank the Manor Inc staff for their continued work um, in this uh, area. Um, I really admire their dedication and their compassion. Um, not only at that meeting, but in every meeting that I've had um, with the executive at, Ma at Manor, um, really inspiring, um, very kind and focused, and they run a, um, a really professional operation on, I think, on a really a, literally a, a shoestring. Um, we recently had the opportunity to uh, attend meetings uh, with the staff and Uniting Care West and um, city staff and um, Deputy Mayor and uh, Mayor Cole. Um, and that included discussions about the transition of meal services from World Square to, to Tramby. And it really was um, quite easy discussions because everybody around that table has the same vision. They've got the same commitment. Um, there were no egos. There were no territorialism. They were all just committed on really and focused on trying to do the right thing for, by um, a section of people within our society who um, really do uh, many times get um, a very hard time. Um, they're living a very hard life um, and it's one that um, I think most people in this room uh, can't really appreciate the difficulty that these people go through. Um, so I really um, do applaud the work that Manor Inc and Uniting Care West and other providers do in the area. Um, so I'm really confident after that meeting um, and I've seen the, the work that the city's done in working with, with Manor Inc over the years to really be able to iron out some of the operational issues that have been encountered in the past. Um, and see, really look forward to how um, all of us can continue to collaborate and um, and help those um, people experiencing homelessness. Councillors, um, look, I do want to speak to it. I won't revisit the comments all made, already made, which I do in wholeheartedly endorse. I'd just like to say that um, working with Manor Inc has been really um, a fantastic experience that they have really worked hard to keep to the parameters, pretty tight parameters that we've set for them over the years and their new coordinator Sheena has just been an absolute um, person of uh, positivity and really embracing um, the challenges and, and change um, presented um, to her and I think she just does this with um, great skill. The service is well beyond World Square when you actually talk to Sheena about what Manor Inc are delivering in terms of free school lunches and lunches across the metropolitan area. It is actually it's unbelievable the amount of work that they do. Um, I do also just want to comment that this really um, decision is really also happening in a broader context in the in terms of the city homelessness response framework which is chaired by um, John Kerry MLA member for Perth and um, Gay um, mental blank Commissioner Gay McMath of the City of Perth who are doing a fantastic job and have really started to do some work in homelessness that the that Perth hasn't seen before um, the City of Vincent has been a member of this group and part of the issues that they're tackling is looking at co-locating services, making sure that um, we're moving into a process of accreditation so that those that are delivering homelessness services are incredibly capable, skilled, have training and that we're really directing what can sometimes be described as goodwill services into a much more um, functional and responsive um, way of dealing with homelessness rather than just allowing homelessness to continue with comfort but to actually put some really clear structure in place with wraparound services to actually try to tackle the issues, um, the complex issues that cause homelessness. Part of that is about um, joining up um, really well experienced providers so what's been suggested here is that Manor Inc will transition to Tranby House it's something that the city had been talking to Manor Inc for years about moving from the park to an indoor environment and Manor Inc are really stepping up to this and saying that they see this as a real benefit to, to their um, people that they're serving and they see this as a good thing um, in terms of actually providing comfort, getting out of the elements, um, it's good for their staff, it's good for the food in terms of being able to warm the food and having some really nice facility for homeless people who um, you know can come to Tranby House. Tranby House is also going through a period of significant change where they are opening their hours extensively. They've gone from operating a morning um, five days a week to seven, um, to seven, seven days a week. It's all part of this response 
responsiveness. Some of the other issues that the City Homelessness Response Framework are looking into are providing precincts, are providing um, are providing services for homeless people throughout the night so that people don't have to feel unsafe. Um, this is all going to be underwritten by a 10-year homelessness strategy that the state government is due to deliver. So I think for the first time there is a sense of hope around homelessness and a sense of really clear direction in the way that the City of Perth, John Kerry and the state government are now trying to actually tackle homelessness in a meaningful way and I'm really proud that the city has been part of that from the inception of the, of the group. We've also encouraged our inner city mayor colleagues on our inner city mayor's working group to join the homelessness response framework. We've met with Brad Pettit recently from the city of Fremantle and made the same recommendation for him to um, look at um, joining this if he's eligible given that he's not immediately in the inner city but Fremantle forms its own city. So this is all part of a broader strategy and I'm really impressed with the way Manor Inc and Tran um, Tranby United Care West have taken this on and um, are really keen to work together and I look forward to see receiving that report within six months on how those transitional arrangements are going. Any further comments? Okay, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? I declare it carried. Next item is 10.2 minor parking restriction improvements and amendments. Moved. Councillor Toppelberg, seconded Councillor Gondoshevsky. Thanks, Mayor Cole. I'll move the amendment on the sunshine. Is there a seconder for the sunshine? Councillor Gondoshevsky. Um, I broadly agree with it, but I'll let you speak to it, seeing as you'd requested it, so go for your life. Well, I'll go to the seconder. Okay. Um, look, I have requested this. I think I've tried to outline the um, reasons by dot point on Sunshine, um, but just to for the public record, because it might not be available for those tuning in at home, um, the city has previously dealt with ramping issues at the former taxi rank, which was located where the Leaderville Village Square is now and has been partly replaced by the Leaderville Hotel's El Fresco. Um, it was a significant issue. It went on for some time um, and the response was for the city to relocate the taxi rank further along Newcastle Street within view of CCTV and with good lighting. Um, at the same time, we considered a number of um, pick-up and set-down bays to, to introduce those into Leaderville to facilitate Uber and other rideshare companies being able to drop off and pick, off e pick up easily. Um, Leaderville Village Square is designed to be a slow slip speed environment, more um, pedestrian friendly, and I do think that having frequent vehicle movements for pick-up and set-down in that space is not wise in that context. And also local traders are currently experiencing um, you know, some issues with parking, given that the Leadville Hotel car park has now been given over to ABN Development. Um, we have been able to demonstrate that we do have some car parking capacity, particularly in our um, car parks, but that on-street car parking is really getting um, at to high occupancy levels, I think over 80% on average. So I didn't think it was wise in those circumstances to change to pick up and drop off in this area and I think it just doesn't work and would prefer that it sticks with 1P moving to um, unrestricted P parking to align with the um, loading bay which also reflects that after loading bay hours. Any further comments on the amendment? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour? Thank you. Unanimous. Back to the substantive. Councillor Loden. Just to let you know, I'm not going to move my amendment um, because part of my premise of moving the amendment was that Council had not amended any of the mining parking uh, things in the last two years, to my understanding, and then uh, we did. <laughs> so kind of eroded my argument a bit, so I will not be moving my amendment. On the move? Move? Move will take that. Yeah. Okay, noted. Okay, I'm going to put the motion unless there's any further comment on the substantive. Okay, I'm putting it. All those in favour? Declare it carried. Moving on to community and business services. 11.1 .1 investment report as at 30th of September 2019. Moved. Councillor Loden, seconded. Councillor Hallett. Oh, just give me a sec to find my part in the notes. I just, I just had one question. 
Um, Councillor Topperberg asked a query about why we're we keeping our Bendigo shares, and the response in the briefing notes was because of the 15% return of investment. Um, if that's the basis, then shouldn't we be buying more of them? <laughs> Through you, Mayor Cole, we, I can provide you with some advice separately about whether they are available. This certainly was a, um, a purchase that we made a number of years ago, and I'm not, not those terms certainly won't be available. Whether there are shares and investments we can make that are of similar benefit is a, is a separate question, so we'll provide some advice. I note that um, we're, we're proposing to take an item to a workshop in two weeks on, on our investment policy, so that'll be the time to advise you on that issue. In that case, I fully support the officer recommendation. Councillor Hallett, do you wish to speak to it? Okay, does anyone wish to speak to it? I'll put it, all those in favour? Declare it carried, I think unanimously, Sophia. Has everyone voted? Yes, thank you, thank you, unanimous. Okay, moving on to Chief Executive Officer items. First item is 12.1 Cities Power Partnership. This was raised by Councillor Fatakis, moved. Seconded by Councillor Loden. Um, I just wanted to um, use this as an opportunity um, to make a couple of comments and I think it's um, just another move forward that I'm really happy to support. Um, if you're looking at a decade ago, um, most people um, could have been excused for not knowing much or doing much about climate change and um, I think today we've got no excuse and um, really frankly I, I don't think we've got much choice. Um, for the last couple of years, um, the Climate Council has been at the forefront of raising awareness about climate change and importantly what we can do to have a positive impact. And I like the fact that um, they're providing the technical ac access, um, more the access to technical information. I know there's many in the room that love good data and, and I'm having a look through the information they provide, um, really happy um, with the, the calibre of information and the support that they provide in helping local councils um, access funding um, incentives and that was one thing that discussed at our workshop last night about uh, really trying to optimise um, opportunities so um, I did actually pick that up in their, their uh, documentation um, and I think the, the policy formation as well, I mean we often um, well we don't forget those of us around the table that we are a small council with limited resources so every opportunity that we can to learn from other councils who may be a little um, uh, bigger resourced, um, more widely funded. Um, I take on any of those, um, those opportunities. So I'm happy to support this. Um, we all have a responsibility to take care of our environment, um, something I've said for, for many years, but I think those of us, um, like those of us in the room that are in a privileged position to affect um, change. I think we've all got to decide what sort of difference that we want to make and what do we want to be remembered for. So, um, And I know that um, all of the colleagues in the, this room have a real uh, commitment to doing something and, and doing anything that we can about, um, about climate change. So, Thank you, Councillor Tarkas. Councillor Loden. Sorry, I thought you were leaning forward to study your speech. Okay. Anyone wish to comment? Happy to say wholeheartedly endorse this. Any further comments? Okay, putting it. All those in favour? Declare it carried. Thank you. Uh, next item is the lease of 12.2, uh, lease of 246 Vincent Street, Leaderville to Minister for Works, Department of Local Government, Sport and Cultural Industries. Moved Councillor Toppelberg, seconded. Councillor Loden. Thank you, Mayor Cole. Um, a question. So part three of the recommendation, which says the following capital works will be undertaken at the city's cost, subject to finalisation of the scope of works, prioritisation of the works in consultation with the Minister and funding being secured in the relevant budgets. What are the implications for the lease if the sitting members of the council at the time don't approve any of those works at the budget? Uh, 
Through you, Mayor Cole, those conditions won't go in the lease document, but when Council approves this, this will be a Council decision and then uh, I guess what we're committing to is to consider it in those budgets. So I don't think there will be any. I maybe would refer that to David, though. CEO, that's been referred back to you. David, that's been referred back to you. But, but So I understand the intent, but from the lessee's perspective, the guarantee they've got, according to what the way that the recommendation is written, is that Council will consider these things. There's no guarantee that they'll actually be done, even though it says they will do the work, because the subject to is the money being allocated and Council being of the view that the scope of works in consultation with the Minister is suitable for its budgetary purposes. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, that, uh, this is a partnership arrangement with the lessee and we negotiate these uh, items routinely throughout the course of the previous lease and we do that um, going forward as well. Um, it would jeopardise the relationship with the lessee if we um, didn't work constructively with them uh, on um, the expectation that we maintain that building to a contemporary standard. No, I don't disagree. So further question. So the, the words upgrade and refurbishment uh, and my hastily arranged, and I do appreciate that site tour yesterday, um, it is a uh, well, complete refit is, was the, the general understanding of what would be uh, achieved for some of those areas. So given the way that Clause 3 is written, uh, is there opportunity for um, a view, for, and it's quite specific, but a view, for example, on the uh, stage of the life cycle and the appropriateness of the floor tiles? Is that something that Council could take a view that they are uh, with a clean and a new and, and regrout that they are of contemporary standard? And that if the rest of the facility, the bathroom facilities, was upgraded, that perhaps the tiling doesn't need to be replaced. Is that the sort of thing that would be the subject of the consultation that's alluded to in the recommendation? Uh, through you, Merkel. Yes, I'm looking at the Director for Infrastructure and Environment. That we have these um, discussions with the uh, lessee on a regular basis, uh, and there there can be some subjectivity uh, on those opinions about. Um, uh, the state um, of particular elements of the, the building and the fixtures and fittings, uh, and we nearly always resolve those via negotiation. Um, the, given that the lessor is a local government with a annual rates base of around $30 million and that the um, lessee is a, well, the Department of Finance, effectively, uh, which is the state government, um, it was there... Was there any discussion about the incentive being provided? Uh, if you look at all of the conditions and the way in which it's structured, it's very much as a commercial lease. We understand that the site is not commercially zoned. The land has only one use and purpose and the occupant is only one potential tenant. So it's not really commercial in, in that respect. Uh, if you take, the, for example, the 1.6 million over the 10 years would be the equivalent of making the rent $220 a metre uh, over the over the same period, for example, was that not was that given consideration at all? Just to make it rather than the burden being placed on the, the ratepayers of Vincent to find the capital to fund the works, just reducing the rent to whatever level was deemed to be appropriate with the market rates for incentive, and to have that burden be borne by the lessee rather than with their resources rather than the city's resources. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, these are. This is now the standard way in which nearly all commercial uh, leases are negotiated in, in the city and we um, were following um, normal practice and that was certainly the uh, approach of uh, the lessee who was uh, pursuing the revised terms for a new lease. So, OK, and when uh, last week there was some talk, uh, or you, you made mention of... Um, because since the Department of Sport and Recreation first occupied the building, they've now been amalgamated with other departments, and that uh, do we get any numbers or guarantee around the number of people that will occupy the building once it has been refitted? Are they intending to bring other parts of the department, or uh, is there, if the investment is made by uh, by the city as is intended by the lease, is there a known benefit in terms of the number of people in Leaderville Town Centre, etc.? Do we get any of those numbers, or can they potentially 
I mean, obviously they can occupy the building with as few or as many people as they like, but have they given any indication of bringing other parts of the newly broadened department into that building? Uh, through you, Merkel, I have met with the Director General of the Department um, essentially at the start of this uh, lease negotiation to understand the intent of uh, the new expanded department, uh, the Department of Local Government, Sport and Cultural Industries. I think it's one of the last remaining um, departments following the state government's amalgamation of um, around 40 government departments into about 25. It's the last remaining department um, which doesn't have a consolidation plan on how to uh, bring its the three different elements split across three sites uh, into one and we'd like to um, pursue that discussion uh, with the department on how to maximise um, the benefit for an expanded footprint in, in Leaderville. Uh, I don't have any numbers that I could provide um, council tonight on what number of extra employees um, they could accommodate in a uh, new or more contemporary um, fit out uh, in the current building um, but I can certainly provide that information um, following my meeting with the Director General next Monday morning. Thank you and my understanding is originally they sought to pursue a much shorter lease term like less than a third of what's currently proposed. Does that give us any comfort that the long-term consolidation plans would, would necessarily be in and around our building that's been set aside for the sole purpose of their occupancy? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, at the start of this negotiation, I think there was a high degree of uncertainty around that, given that there is a large amount of uh, movement in the uh, state um, government uh, accommodation uh, footprint, including large-scale moves of all the environmental agencies up, up to a new building in Joondalup and the Department of Communities incorporating the disability services, housing, um, are moving uh, to, into Fremantle that is freeing up uh, large amounts of previous state government accommodation uh, in the city and res resulting in some uh, consolidation and movement within um, 140 Williams Street. Um, the discussion I had with the Director General certainly indicated that um, there is now a, a long-term commitment from the Department to um, stay and be based in Leaderville, and I think that's signalled by um, the uh, Department of Finance intention to uh, secure a 10-year lease for this building. Okay, and my last question, the, the proposed method of funding that's been discussed uh, in terms of where the funds would be accessed from, none of those deci those decisions will be made as part of the budget process for 2021 and beyond. So the the whilst the well, the the city's offices have put forth a a number of proposals or ideas, none of that has been agreed to, and the agreement to the lease has no bearing on the actual way in which it's funded. Through Mayor, through you, Mayor Cole, yes, that's correct. It'd be up to council to decide um, how to. Um, which method would like to uh, pursue to uh, achieve that? Have you finished, Councillor Tobelberg? Councillor Gonczewski? Oh, sorry, sorry, Councillor Loden. The other Councillor Gonczewski. <laughs> Depends. Can just vary on any given night. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to support the officer recommendation. Um, I did have some questions I fired through, one of which was around um, what we had been paying historically. So historically we've basically been putting the entirety of whatever was left over in terms of the rent onto the mortgage, good practice, um, and in the cash flow that we provided in the briefing notes, uh, briefing last week but isn't in the report, but would have been great to have seen that included in the report in some way as a confidential attachment. It's not in there, is there? No. Um, shows that we're actually cash flow positive, so technically this revised lease is a better outcome for the city compared to um, what we were previously doing. Obviously we're not getting as much rent as we were, but we're still, there'll actually be net cash flow into the city. So I'm happy to support on that basis, plus we don't really have much of a choice. Um, a comment, I'm not going to move an amendment on this, but um, we're, the proposal is that they give us... Um, $160,000 a year for 10 years, escalated at 3%, which starts at 160 k and by my math, it finishes up at 215 k after 10 years. If we had to go out to the market and borrow 
this money, um, we would be paying more than $160,000 in our first year. Of, so if we're in a situation where this was designed to be just a cost equalisation exercise and um, we would actually in the early years be pulling funds out of other reserves or, um, or rates to make the additional interest of payments effectively on this until such time as the, the principal interest paid down and the rent effectively increased at CPI. So my, my personal view is it would have been better to see um, that 40% shift more of that, that to make it basically flat in, in nominal terms. Normal terms, yes, normal terms rather than in real terms. So get 180,000 in every year for 10 years rather than getting 160 now and 215 in 10 years' time um, because we're basically going to have to borrow money effectively or find money from somewhere in those first five years and then get it back in five years' time. That sounds very complex, I know. Um, I probably confused everybody, possibly even myself. Um, I would observe that ultimately this reserve is going to be chewed up with other sustainability, uh, asset sustainability work that we have to do. So this should really be considered an incremental borrowing case. So the report talked about, the email we received talked about 2.36% as our cost of capital, which is fantastic. I need that on my mortgage. Um, that should be the basis on what we're, we're considering these things because we're going to be using, we're ultimately going to have to go out to the market and get get money to to pay for other things. If we don't use the asset sustainable, if we use it for this, we're going to be borrowing the equivalent amount in a couple of years' time when we need to do works on some of our other buildings. Um, and under that basis, we need 180 a year to pay back the 1.6 million over 10 years. Um, I know it's only 20 grand versus what we're actually getting in, and that'll, that'll shrink pretty quickly, but that's kind of my view on this. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Um, if you want to know how I worked it all out, it's there. So me and Corey have something your, in common. We love your sums. Thank yeah. you, Councillor Loden. <laughs> Councillor Fatakis. Um, if I wasn't confused before, then thank you, Councillor Loden. Um, just uh, with uh, reference to the CEO, just to confirm that you are meeting the DG this coming Monday. Um, I'm not completely satisfied with all the information that I've been provided. It's come through in dribs and drabs, so I would like to actually move a motion for deferral, um, Ex if that's possible. I think we have established a standard where before moving a motion for deferral, there's an opportunity for people who wish to speak to the motion be first permitted to speak. So are you happy to foreshadow... A deferral. I'll foreshadow the deferral and then if and others allow wish to speak, my, and allow my then they can speak, speak, which I think is an opportunity for council members to outline what it is they're seeking from a deferral. So, um, but feel free to continue speaking if you wish to at this point onto the substantive motion. No? Does anyone wish to speak before that? Thank you, Councillor Castle. Yeah, through you, Mayor Cole, I'd just ask a question what the implications of a deferral would be if we were deferring this to de the December meeting. What, um, what impact would that have on the negotiations and going forward? Through you, Mayor Cole, the lease expires at the end of the year, so Council could consider this at the meeting in December. Councillors, I would like to speak to it. Um, look, it has it has come forward in a way that perhaps could have been have a little bit more time for council to actually consider and digest um, the financial implications. I think that, in terms of the actual rent reduction, I completely accept that. That's the market in where that we're in. Um, that we are in a situation where you know the city of Vincent in the past determined to um, build this building on Crown land that it cannot be sold and for it to have a condition of approval that it could only be leased to one entity um, and that we also negotiated a, um, a lease term for 15 years where we were not yet through paying off the um, original cost of the building. We intend to make a balloon payment this year of some $3.5 million dollars and then we'll have $1 million remaining. So not, you know, not a 
great position to be in, in a strong bargaining position. And I don't see this as a purely commercial um, negotiation for those reasons. But I do accept... Um, I do accept the rent reduction. I think that it is really good that we have been able to secure the 10-year term. Well, we haven't secured anything yet because we haven't agreed, but that that is a fantastic outcome coming from three years. And I note that this has been a very, very difficult um, negotiation and that this has really um, has improved over the course of the negotiations and I thank um, administration for that. What I do have some concern about is that I think that when you look at the report, which is a public report and the basis on which we um, justify our decision-making to our community, it is a four-page report and then it does have the attachment from Acumen, which actually does seem to be quite specific about how they do want new tiles and all fittings replaced in the bathroom, etc. And I think that um, for me to feel comfortable to make this decision, a lot of the information that Council has sought, because we have asked a lot of questions, um, has been provided through the Council briefing notes um, we have had some projections in terms of you know how we deal with that over the ten year term of the of the lease yet that 's not an attachment to this report. Um, I think that it 's really important when council makes a decision of this magnitude and for me it 's not really the the reduction in revenue is of a hundred thousand dollars per annum I think that 's just a result of where we 're at in terms of um, the value of the building um, and declining market but for the in, in addition but the capital costs and how we're going to actually fund those I think that is an important question to be able to demonstrate um, we have discussed that last night we had a workshop and we talked about our long-term financial plan we talked about the fact that the um, strategic advisor um, on financial matters advised that he would recommend that we draw the 1.6 from our $3 million asset sustainability reserve, but I think that we should actually document this in our report and demonstrate how it is that we would um, you know, seek to deal with this. I recognise that the capital costs are somewhat fluid. I think that there is... Um, it did sound to me that um, the requirements versus what when Councillor Topperberg and I took the opportunity for a site visit, when you're talking about replacing tiling that looks like it's quite contemporary and in very good condition, that is slightly worrisome. I think we'd like to explore the idea of whether we could actually put in place solar panels on a, um, I don't know what it's called, a buyback system. I think I'll put the correct terminology in an email. So I, I sort of feel that if we did defer this, we would actually have an opportunity to get more detailed capital works costings, perhaps we could even have an agreed cap to give us more financial um, security. Um, I would like to have a better understanding of the $1.6 million incentive, whether it's actually because of there's some urgency due to the need for greater capacity or whether it's just meeting upgrade requirements under state government policy. And if it is the latter, why not allow us more time to, um, to pay that $1.6 million? Could that not be um, paid over a period or in a, say, year three, for example, to give us some capacity to put that rent income into the asset sustainability um, reserve and have some time to accrue some savings. Um, I am interested in whether there has been an officer-to-officer -officer discussion rather than just through commercial negotiators. Um, and I think that I think that I could be happy to approve this in a month's time, but I think that we do have some... Um, I think that it would be better to have a more fulsome report that's publicly available in a timely way that demonstrates how we're actually going to meet this unexpected financial challenge of this rent negotiation. So I would support a deferral motion for those reasons. Are there any further comments? Okay. Councillor Fatakis. Um, I'd like to put forward a motion for deferral until December's uh, council meeting. Is do we need to actually do on the basis of do why we defer? Just, just to the date. Yeah, December just to meeting. the next year, to the December meeting. Is there a seconder? Seconded Councillor Toppelberg. Um, it being a procedural motion, there is no discussion or debate, so I'll put it. All those in favour? All those against? Councillor Loden voting against. I declare it, declare it carried.
Okay, the next item is the interim arrangement for the management of the Robertson Park Tennis Centre. Moved, Councillor Gondoshevsky, seconded. Councillor Fatakis. Thank you, Mayor. I just had a couple of questions in relation to um, the um, this item. Sorry, I'm just going to get to it. Um, so we note that tennis seniors um, are terminating their tenancy of the tennis club uh, at Robertson Park, effective 12th of November 2019. I just wanted to check in relation to... Um, the state of the current facility on the exiting of tennis seniors, just, um, um, I guess, what the state of the facilities are, um, if the city's conducted any assessment since the 3rd of October to identify any works that may be required, and what, if any, were the obligations of tennis seniors in relation to the maintenance, renewal and repair of the courts and club rooms and the facilities that they were the lessee of? Um, and just in terms of um, what the um, terms were under the lease, in terms of the, um, uh, I guess, repairs, maintenance, keeping the premises in good condition, uh, repairs due to fair wear and tear and structural maintenance. Through you, Mayor Cole, the City is looking to engage someone to do the facility condition, condition assessment. Um, they haven't been engaged yet. I believe we've got a few quotes, so hopefully that will happen soon. And that's why we need that to happen before. I guess that's why this is an interim arrangement. So we need to understand the condition before we can enter into a longer term lease. In respect to the obligations on tennis seniors, so the current lease doesn't have very express provisions about repairs and maintenance. Basically says that they're responsible for general um, general maintenance of the premises, excluding fair wear and tear. So we have actually got some advice to confirm the exact um, meaning of those clauses. And the lease isn't clear enough to say that they would be responsible for things like if the courts needed resurfing, resurfacing, if the lighting needed upgrades, if the bore needed upgrades, basically that's likely to be the city's responsibility. Um, and in t so in terms of the um, current lease proposal, um, where it is ultimately talking about the structural repairs and the capital works, Etc. being the responsibility of the city. That's essentially because at this point in time we don't have a clear understanding of the status, so therefore we can't really um, put that on Tennis West. Right. I don't know if that's a question. That's more my statement about um, the new lease. Okay, thank you. Um, look, I think I've answered... I had my questions answered in relation to this item um, once again, the lease comes back to bite us. It's great. Um, so I'm somewhat disappointed, um, but I think that the city is obviously looking to um, ensure that we've got a um, continuation um, of the current operations and the services that are oper uh, offered at Robertson Park, um, noting that we will be undertaking a uh, development plan for the site um, in conjunction with the community um, uh, commencing early next year and um, that that process as well as the um, condition assessment that's going to be undertaken will provide us with uh, both the community sentiment and also a more fulsome picture of our financial um, or the um, uh, I guess the financial obligations that may come from um, the continuation of um, tennis at the site um, or what the options are going forward. So I'm supportive of the officer recommendation. Councillor Fatakis. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm supportive of this. Um, it is an interim um, management arrangement. And I think if there was... I mean, we have many examples um, of leases not to do and um, support for our new approach of how we're handling um, the leases and agreements with, with clubs moving forward. This is a good example of what not to do moving forward and, and why um, city staff are taking uh, the responsible 
um, approach moving forward, a lot more clarity in the leases as to who's responsible for what um, and reducing the burden um, on the city and, and surprises like this as well. So um, absolutely agree to support this. Uh, I don't want to see Robinson Park empty over summer. It's great driving past and seeing all the tennis players out there and especially seeing we've just had a, a visit by... Um, uh, Miss Barty graced our town, so I think uh, tennis is alive and well, and certainly in the capital city of tennis for Perth, um, in the city of Vincent. Thank you. Any further speakers? Okay, I'll put it all those in favour. Declare it carried. Next item is 12.5, Annual Corporate Business Plan Quarterly Update. Councillor Castle. Seconded, Councillor Hallett. Uh, through you, Matt Cole. Yes, happy to support, and uh, it's great to see the amount of um, progress that has been made on a number of items in our CBP. Um, I just have a couple of questions. The first is in relation to item 3.4, Community Engagement Charter. Um, this was not marked with a red cross at the briefing. Um, but it is now with the comment that on hold during election project will be rescoped. I'm just wondering if we can have some detail on what's happening with that. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, uh, we did uh, undertake to have a look and review of the advisory groups uh, and how they function as an, an engagement uh, mechanism for the city, and we're going to bring uh, a report on that to Council shortly. Um, at a council workshop, I think, on the uh, 26th of November, and we'd wanted just to confirm how the this project and the engagement charter, the link to the current community panel and the advisory groups um, will all sync together um, over the next 12 months. Okay. Does, that, does the Red Cross mean then that it's not expected to be complete in this financial year or that it's at risk? of not being completed? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole. Uh, no, we just want to um, come back to Council to um, clarify there are no implications of uh, the review of advisory groups uh, and um, the going forward into uh, this new period for Council, including um, some other initiatives that we talked about uh, regarding participatory budgeting um, and uh, greater transparency and how that could uh, help inform this engagement charter. Um, okay, and I uh, have another question in relation to item 5.5, .5, which is around character retention planning. Um, just find that. The notes say that the administration is reviewing the submissions regarding the Mount Hawthorne character retention area and I'm just wondering if we can have an update on where that's at and again what sort of timeline we're looking at for that project. Uh, through you Mayor Cole, the project will be coming to the council workshop in November for discussion. And is that the only proposed character retention precinct that we have that we're um, considering at the moment? or for this financial year? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, yes. At this stage, um, that's the, the area that Council agreed to. Uh, I think it was at the either April or May Council meeting. Um, so we're just implementing that project for now um, and then may look to implement others in the future. So, Councillor Castle, I just, you just picked my interest there. Um, so sorry, we haven't been to the second oh, yet. Sorry. Councillor Hallett, Can do you wish to speak to it? No? Go ahead. Oh, it's just a question to just confirm then that um, the item that is coming to a workshop in November is not just advisory groups, it is advisory groups community engagement charter as a holistic discussion. Is that correct? Uh, through you, Merkel, I haven't seen the um, papers for, the, uh, for that for council, but we just wanted to um, make sure that uh, the engagement strategy um, wasn't progressing um, separate to council's views on the advisory groups going forward and what the best, um, the best establishment of those advisory groups are, the number we have, um, the subjects that they uh, 
cover I'm and whether there should be reference groups or focus groups and the role of the community engagement panel, which is um, uh, we need to revisit as well. Um, yes, thank you. Um, that's good information to have. I guess I, th I understand Councillor Castle's question was in relation to the CBP update that appeared to put the development of the community engagement charter on hold pending the election and seeking some clarification on where that was at. And I believe your advice was that that item in relation to the community engagement charter would be coming to f council to discuss at a workshop in November. Can I clarify that? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, there'll be an item on uh, the review of the advisory groups uh, and we'll just uh, provide some advice to council on uh, how uh, the number of different engagement activities, including the development of the uh, engagement charter, could be influenced by the direction council decides to take uh, in terms of advisory groups going forward. And so when would a fulsome discussion be occurring in relation to the engagement charter, given that that, discussed, that project appeared to be put on hold during the election period? What is the timeline for those discussions to be reinvigorated? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, we can reinvigorate them the, uh, straight after the council workshop uh, in November. Council members, any further comments or questions? Council Loden. Uh, just one comment following up from my question from the briefing, which was around um, the number the number of outstanding energy efficiency projects that we have. In the briefing notes, there was provided a list of the items proposed for next year. Um, I assume there's also outward years of those items as well, given energy efficiency typically pays for itself in one to two years. I think it would be worth considering bringing forward those initiatives into next year's budget. I'm not going to move an amendment here, um, although it would be kind of fun too, wouldn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, but just for shadowing, I'm likely to put something like that forward for consideration in the 2020-21 budget. Thank you, Councillor Loden. Any further comments or questions? And Carl put it. All those in favour? Declare it carried unanimously. Our next item is 12.6, appointment of community members and elected members to the City of Vincent Audit Committee and amendment of terms of reference. Can I have a mover and seconder, please? Move Councillor Toppelberg, seconded Councillor Hallett. Um, thank you. I just wanted to say that um, I know that it's it's in the confidential attachments, but um, the um, the uh, amendment of the terms of reference to include the three um, candidates, presuming that we are about to vote for all three to be included in there, I think is excellent. I think it's a really high quality field that we've attracted, um, and I'm yeah happy to amend those terms of reference. And we'll also at this point formally put forth my nomination to be one of the four people in the uh, from the city. Thank you, Councillor Toppelberg. Um, Councillor Hallett, do you wish to speak to it? Just a, a quick question whether the um, CEO is able to uh, comment on um, that we only got three applicants for the three positions and whether... Um, oh, sorry, but, um, but that we only had three applicants for a small number of positions and um, whether we would have expected... Um, any other recruitment strategies might have um, produced more applicants for it. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, I'm challenging myself to think of how we could make the audit committee seem more exciting. <laughs> um, uh, noting that we're actually asking our residents who are qualified in accounting or financial management or risk management to um, volunteer their time because we don't pay them um, <coughs> to uh, serve on the committee. Uh, so we're looking, uh, I think it works quite well that the applicants we've got um, are both um, qualified, competent, experienced and community minded uh, and invested in the city of Vincent that they want to um, serve uh, on our audit committee in all, all of its excitement and glory as I'm looking towards the, uh, the former chair. Um, there we 
we looked very hard and we asked a lot of people to um, find um, the best qualified candidates and we've got um, three very good nominations. Councillors. Um, well, so far via email, I've had um, expressions or nominations received via email from Councillor Loden, Councillor Toppleberg, Councillor Gon Susan Gonczewski in verbally rather than via email and Councillor Ashley Wallace. Any further nominations to be received this evening? Okay, and are you all happy to endorse the, um, to put forward the three names in the confidential attachment, um, put, put, put them forward as um, community representatives? So, yes, okay. So I'm just jumping between attachments here. So I'll read the motion. So clause one is as is on the page. Clause 2, in accordance with the provisions of sections 5, 10 and 7, 1A of the Local Government Act 1995, approved by absolute majority the appointment of the following elected members to the Audit Committee for the term 12th of November 2019 to the date of the next ordinary local government election 16th of October 2021. The, those being Councillor Susan Gontoshevsky, Councillor Dan Loden, Councillor... Josh Toppleberg and Councillor Ashley Wallace and Clause 3 in accordance with the provisions of Sections 5, 10 and 7, 1A of the Local Government Act approves by absolute majority the appointment of the external independent members to the Audit Committee for the term 12th November 19 to the date of the next ordinary local government election, 16th October 2021, uh, Elizabeth Hunt, Connolly Manifest and Robert Piper. Um, so is there any further comment or discussion? Okay, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Declare it carried unanimously. That takes us to the next item, appointment of an alternate member for the Mindari Regional Council meeting on the 12th of December 2019. Um, we did have an expression of interest from Councillor Toppleberg, but I'll get a mover and seconder first. Moved. Councillor Loden, seconded Councillor Toppleberg. I fully support uh, Councillor Toppleberg's nomination and congratulate him for putting his name forward. Councillor Toppleberg. I, I think expression of interest is a stretch, <laughs> but an expression of preparedness to go, I think, is probably... Well, look, at I'm just going to yeah, no, say I, there are important I, I, issues I, 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 being no, no, discussed I, at Mindari Regional Council right now, so I do wish someone to go that's going to get across that. I will happily nominate Thank Nicole. you. That's great. Any further discussion or other nominations? This is only for one meeting. OK, I'll put it. All those in favour? Declare the motion carried. That takes us to item 12.8, appointment of elected members to the CO Performance Review Panel. We may have an election on our hands here because we have four positions and we currently have five nominees. But I'll move to go to a mover and seconder first. Moved Councillor Loden, seconded Councillor Toppleberg. Um, go ahead. Um, for Shadow, I'm happy to withdraw my nomination. I know that Councillor Toppleberg will be really pissed. But I would also observe that Councillor Toppleberg does have the opportunity still to nominate himself, and therefore that would allow for an election to occur. Um, I did want to ask, however, for those people that are nominating, excluding the mayor, because she's already on there, as to um, why you want to be in that role and what um, experiences you're proposing to bring to the role, because... It is probably one of the most important things that we do. We have one employee, I think I'm channeling Toppleberg, uh, Councillor Toppleberg here again, and it's really important that we do a good job of it. Uh, so I'm interested to know why you would like to have this position. 
I'm happy to go first. Um, I, I am required under policy, but I also liaise with the CEO on an almost daily basis and have the, the closest working relationship, and it's essential that the Mayor be on the panel. I also do um, all of the work in terms of actually securing the consultant, getting the paperwork happening, doing all of the liaison, coordinating the meetings with um, Alicia Falconer's um, exceptional assistance. Um, so um, I'm certainly would say that I'm pulling my weight in relation to um, my requirements under the CEO Performance Review Panel and very happy to be doing so as it is so important. And I don't need your vote, but I would love your support. Um, I'm interested in being on the CEO Performance Review Panel because I feel it's appropriate um, given that... Um, I work closely with Mayor Cole in my role as Deputy Mayor. I'm required to act as the Mayor in her absence um, and as a result I uh, engage regularly with the Mayor on um, ongoing items including um, these sorts of items so I think it's reasonable for me to be uh, in the loop throughout the process. I was also awesome last time around so I think I should have your support this time. Oh, how do you top that? I'm really God. pleased with the level of confidence we all have about See? ourselves. It's good, isn't it? It's after you stood up for election, you learn to sell yourself. Well, Councillor Castle, yeah. it's your turn. Yeah, I'd just like to note that I raised my hand to go next. I didn't just go ahead. <laughs> I'm interested in being on the panel. I've been on council for two years. I think it's really important with these types of committees to have fresh eyes at regular um, intervals. So um, that's that's one of the motivations. I bring a wealth of experience from a different range of industries. I'm not going to give you my elevator pitch, but um, I would hope that after two years on council, many of you know me, would have some trust in my uh, decision-making abilities. And I aspire to be as awesome as the Deputy Mayor. OK. Um, Councillor Fatakis. Apologies, Councillor Castle. <laughs> sort of did you a little bit of a, a hip and shoulder there, jumped in. I saw the Deputy Mayor have confidence and, and jump in with um, with hers, and I did get excited. <laughs> Didn't wait for the Mayor. Um, been on council for two Sorry, years. Sorry, I was unaware there was a... <laughs> this was going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. On council for two years now, and um, one of the... First things that you really that really becomes of um, obvious is really the importance of the relationship, not just between mayor and CEO, um, is between the CEO um, and mayor and, and councils, and to ensure that um, we are all really focused, we're all on the same page. Um, there's um, really the sharing of ideas and expertise um, moving forward um, and I think that um, and it's just, it's just not I mean it's the assessment of the annual assessment of, of the the CEO's performance it's also I see the, um, this is an opportunity to support the CEO um, it's, a, it's a mutual thing so it's not just uh, a performance review opportunity it's an opportunity for us to work together as a as a team moving forward and as the eldest member of council, I think you need some seniority. You young things need some seniority on, on the review panel. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> um, I just also would like to provide some information to the new council members about the process. We do have the CEO recruitment um, performance, sorry, CEO performance review process, which is a policy, which is something that Len Kosova and I worked together on, and I think it was one of the first in local government to actually have a policy outlining a process and something I recommend to the, our regional councils whenever we get the opportunity. Um, but in terms of if you're worried about what role all council plays, there is a role for all council. There is... Um, uh, the consultant who is engaged prepares a survey. It is prepared. It is filled out by all council members. Also, 
parts of administration. Um, it doesn't have, it can, you know, there can actually be discussion with the consultant as well. And um, the process is informed by council making decisions in terms of appointment of the consultant, agreeing the time frame, agreeing the process, and then at the point at which the panel reports back to council, there is a discussion um, about the process. There's an opportunity for questions and answer with both the panel and with the CEO. So it is it's actually the panel is driving the process, but it is a decision of council in terms of setting that process and making any decisions around CEO review and um, issues like remuneration. Um, so did you move? So you'd like... So you'd like to speak, to, you'd like to continue to speak, okay. So I'm, I'm happy to withdraw my nomination on the hope that Councillor Toppleberg will nominate, but he probably won't. Um, my touchstone on this has been clarity, autonomy and mastery, making sure that we can provide clarity through the KPIs to the CEO on what he's expected to do and when, um, give him the opportunity and the organisation to master those KPIs and give him the autonomy to actually deliver on those things so that we don't create a whole heap of hooks where he has to come back and constantly check in with us. And I think that's a really critical thing that we need to be thinking about when we set these KPIs, that we're not hindering the organisation in doing what they need to do by the way that we set them. So um, that would be my piece of advice. Um, Councillor Topwerg, do you wish to speak? Just briefly, very briefly. Um, so... Yeah, I, so I've been involved in 10, 10, 10 performance reviews, I think, because uh, it used to be all in. Um, uh, but the reason that I withdrew from this one is I think it is a really important thing to, uh, to be a part of, and I think Councillor Castle is correct. It, it does benefit from having a variety of views, but one of the key changes that made me comfortable uh, with not having a role on the panel itself is that the fact that we, and I think we're one of the only councils uh, in WA that does it, but the full report is made available to all council members uh, as part of the report, not on request or otherwise. And so that information is fairly, more readily available uh, and people can still participate in the process. And I think that we um, we do actually have a really good model here. CEO, uh, it's his first role as a CEO, but it's been through a uh, performance review process in uh, many other facets. And I think that we, what we do here is unique in local government and it's uh, it certainly is, is a fulsome process that uh, you actually deliver something that all parties, certainly from where I sit, all parties actually understand the process and where, where we arrive at. So um, I'm very disappointed we don't get to use the secret ballot, Councillor Loden. I'm very disappointed. Still opportunities. Um, OK, does anyone else wish to speak to the motion before I put it? OK, so the motion will read that Council appoints the following elected members to the CEO Performance Review Panel for the term 12th November 19 to the next ordinary local government election of 16th October 2021. Mayor Emma Cole, Chairperson, Councillor Susan Gontoshevsky, Councillor, uh, Councillor Castle and Councillor Fatakis. So I'm moving the motion. All those in favour? I declare it carried unanimously. Okay, we're now dealing with 12.9, appointment of elected members to the Metro West Joint Development Assessment Panel. Um, before we have a mover and second, I'm just noting that we have received four um, nominations via email, Councillor Loden and Councillor Toppleberg to continue as the, uh, we call them principal primary members and um, Councillor Susan Gonchashevsky and Councillor Ashley Wallace to um, take the part of alternate members. Can I have a mover and seconder, please? Moved Councillor Loden, second Councillor Gonchashevsky. Happy for it to be as proposed, unless there's other members who would like to put their hands up. Councillor Gonchashevsky, at this stage, I'll just see if there are any other nominations. Then. Councillor Topper, you wish just, to speak to it? Um, we got a response in the briefing notes that training will be provided in early 2020 um, because uh, in the event that any... Well, if two people aren't available, Councillor Wallace is not able to participate till he's completed the training. Did the department give any indication how early in 2020? Um, because two years ago they promised they wouldn't let it go much past the election. I'm surprised they didn't arrange it for later in the calendar year. Did they say when in 2020 it can be expected? 
Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, we don't have exact dates as yet, so we'll follow up with them and provide the dates as soon as we have them. Perhaps when we're following up with the department, we could ask if they would um, be pursuing an online training module. I don't think that the training that they present is overly complex and could not be provided by online. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. So, are there any further comments or questions? Okay. So, the motion will read that council appoints the following elected members to present the city of Vincent, represent the city of Vincent on the Metro West Joint Development Assessment Panel for the period 27th of January 2020. Oh, this isn't commencing until the 27th of January. So that does allow a bit more time for training, sorry. To 26th of January 2022, members, um, Councillor Dan Loden and Councillor Josh Toppelberg and alternate members, Councillor Susan Gondoszewski and Councillor Ashley Wallace. All those in favour? I think you would declare the motion carried unanimously. Okay, that takes us to a notice of motion for the evening, 13.1, Councillor Joanne Fatakis, Review of Local Government Property Local Law. Moved, Councillor Fatakis. Seconded, Councillor Loden. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just during the recent local government um, elections we just held, um, we did find that there were a large number um, of our community uh, raised concerns. A lot of them raised concerns with me personally, and I know that uh, a number of complaints were received about the proliferation of election signs installed um, on public uh, land on thoroughfares um, and certainly uh, within our uh, town centres. Um, there was a lot of concerns expressed about the signs being adhered to existing signposts, many of them um, other uh, traffic um, or wayfind signposts, um, and concern about the potential safety risk, especially with distracting drivers. Um, Certainly upset about signs being adhered um, to trees and the lack of respect that uh, some of uh, community members felt uh, that that showed. Um, and I understand that we do have a review of the property local law in the pipeline. Um, and it's not my intention in any way to propose um, a prohibition on the election signage, but this is a, a good opportunity for us to really have um, a good review of, of that thing that is fairly recent um, uh, experiences that we've had. Um, on the prohibition um, issue, there's been um, enough High Court and Supreme Court uh, decisions po uh, pointing to the implied freedom that of communication that exists under the Constitution um, in relation to political and um, and government matters, and and for that reason, why uh, a number of councils have um, got themselves into a little bit of trouble with that, um, and it's also too with regards to the impact on amenity decisions that indicate that amenity isn't uh, the only issue, but um, a number of the issues that were raised with me um, were about potential littering. There was still the comment on last Saturday about still seeing signs uh, around the city of some candidates. So I think there's an opportunity for us to really look at um, that compliance side of it um, as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really about uh, achieving that balance between our freedom of communication, but just ensuring there's some clearer guidance provided on where we place uh, the election signs in the public realm. Councillor Loden. Um, I just had uh, two questions. Um, firstly, it wasn't clear from the report whether or not administration supported the notice of motion. It just provided a statement of what it, what it all meant. So I was wondering if you could clarify if admin had a position. Through you, Mayor Cole, yes, we do support this. We're already doing the review and as we did receive some complaints about signage, so we'll take them into account in our review and then obviously report back to council. And the second one was... Um, I think, it, I think this is fine, but I just wanted to check on conflict of interest because we're making a resolution around elections and we all have to go through elections. Is there a conflict of interest for Council on this and how do we handle it? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, if there's, if there's an interest to be an interest in common, um, 
but uh, it's up to council to uh, determine policy, and this would be a policy which um, council would agree with that interest in common um, going forward for with a view of what would be best for the residents of the city of Vincent. I'm happy to support the notice of motion. Councillors, any further speakers? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour? Declare it carried unanimously. Um, so that concludes our, um, our uh, reports to be dealt with in an open meeting. We do have one confidential report remaining, 17.1. Um, but we will resume. Um, we will. Thank you very much for those joining us back on the live stream. We have concluded our confidential item for the meet, for this meeting, item 17.1, management of the Loftus Community Centre, and Council has adopted the motion as recommended, and I'll read that now. That Council 1 provides in principle support for the City to take over the direct management of the Loftus Community Centre, effective from 1st January 2020, or a date agreed by the CEO. 2. Approves by absolute majority the current Loftus Community Centre Centre Inc. fees and charges schedule included as attachment 742.1 fees payable for the hire of rooms in the centre until the end of the 1920 financial year and 2.2 membership fees payable for a family, business and seniors membership per annum. Clause 3 notes that a review of the Loftus Community Centre's operations and running costs will be undertaken over the next six months and that the results of this review will be presented to Council as part of its 2020-21 budget considerations. And Clause 4 authorises by an absolute majority the following 1920 budget adjustment adjustments to fill a state for, sorry, it's past 10. Facilitate one and two above. Existing budget 1920 um, from and two are the columns, and I'll read across the columns. Fees and charges two, negative 75,000. Salaries, casual staff hours two, 85,000. Community budget submissions from 50,000 to negative 50,000. Other operating expenses, cleaning, electricity, insurance, program expenses, etc. to $40,000. Total financial impact, net surplus zero. And that concludes the meeting tonight. I um, close the meeting at 10.04pm. Thank you, everyone.